Of course there are. A question came in today from uh, Dean Locke about purchasing. Um, yeah, so add it. Got it. Okay. Uh, what do you got, Duncan? Um, I wanted to either touch bases on the email that I think we all received, or I think I quoted it from Ernie Pomelo, yeah. regarding the market. Um, I think we, uh, Randall, I think is going to be on Zoom. Oh, cool. um, I also think I met with him today for his first work day. Tom, Tom was there and I met with him. Um, and I, it was pretty clear that he would like us to, I think we've got enough things for him to do for the immediate purposes, but I think we owe, as part of his job description and all that, we, we need to develop a priority list for things for him to work on. Recording in so progress. When or how we want to do that, but I think we should schedule some time somewhere to make that happen. Got it, number 10. Update on the EDA grant. Tom is going to talk about that in his report. I'd like to possibly chime in on some of that. And I was approached by a member of the public regarding where we are on our class four road policy. You know, there are other issues out there as well. Um, but I just wanted to bring it to the attention of the board that we just, so we don't lose track of it. Basically. A class four road as a new number 19. Um, okay, and I'm not going to add the EDA, you can just add on to Tom's item. The other thing is that item number 10, which is the FEMA bio program, that's going to be bumped to two weeks from today because Stephanie can't make it. Okay. Would you mind sharing that um, list with me? Um, it is considered confidential. I can share it with you, yes, but it has to be considered confidential. The state very specifically told us that. Um, okay. When will it not be confidential? I don't know. I don't know, but it's not our list. And it's not the official submissions. It's people's interest in working with the emergency management to begin the buyout process and understand what it entails. And from what I understand from folks involved who have submitted requests for buyout, they have not yet heard anything from the state. And I think the state wants, based on our conversation that um, Carl and I had with Stephanie and Brian, um, who are both state hazard mitigation officers, um, both the property owner and the town has to agree to a buyout. So we really need to have our discussion. But because the town would often not like the take over ownership of the buyout. Right? So yeah, there's lots of details around that. Right. So yes, mostly. And I think there are potentially other options, but ultimately, yeah. Um, Okay, let's jump in. Uh, review orders, invoices, and orders. The packet's going around. Consider minutes for September 18th. I think we got the 25th also. Oh, they, did, they came in this morning. <clears throat> yeah. I would move to approve the minutes of the 18th. I honestly haven't looked at the, well, I wouldn't even have the 25th meeting, so yeah. it doesn't matter if I look at them or not. Do we have a motion for the 18th to do it second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have it. Any issue, uh, select board issues or concerns? Is Rosemary zooming in tonight? Why did I think she was? Is Rosemary zooming in? She's got a lot of, well. I was under the impression she might, but she also, um, in the back of all of your packets are, each person has financials. Um, so if she does not zoom in, um, we can I, go over Just those. for some reason, I thought I saw where she might attend. Is issues and concerns a good spot for Duncan to give an update on his meeting? Or is that a separate? Yeah, you mean? Um, the, well, the email that he 
receipt from Ernie Bommel. Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, well, we're going to talk about market. There's an item for market. We're going to talk about market and replace of number 10. Oh, okay. Yep. In place of number 10. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, we got the email about the cemetery uh, cleanup. Also, I got an email that ATV is going from the direction of the village onto Rocky Road. So that is not the segment of 100 feet that's allowed. Um, sheriff's were called just FYI. What did you say about cemetery cleanup? Uh, that you that you replaced that stone. Oh, okay. yes, I, didn't, yeah, I didn't replace it. I right it. Out. it. Thank yes. you very much. Yeah, um, Looks good. Yeah. What were you going to say? I just said thank you. No, before that. I was just thinking. Is okay. that okay? <laughs> it, was, it was grimacing. No, you're about to say something, but it's okay. Uh, fine. Yep. <clears throat> Approved. It's hard to be in a room like that. Wonderful. You, like just read your mind. Other issues and concerns, Tasha has been, Tasha and Seth, I think, have been following what's happening in relation to individual properties in town um, and has been advocating for Johnson on our behalf with state entities, pushing emails and updates. Um, additionally, I received text messages today. I wasn't able to connect with Melanie Carpenter, who's working really closely with United Way. Her question was about FEMA trailers and you know, why Johnson isn't getting any. I know we had this conversation with Carl. Go ahead. Um, I just spoke with Mo from FEMA. I did not get a last name. And they're looking at a property on Overhill to place FEMA trailers. I think one of the conditions is that trailers can't be placed within the floodplain. And so that's um, finding that location in a property owner, a private property owner reached out to FEMA. And so now FEMA is looking into that property. Okay, cool. That's good. Presumably they have, have to have access to water, sewer, electric service. Too. They have said that they have to have access to those things, yes. FEMA has told us that, but if they're looking at the property, like, go look at whatever you can look at. Are we still on issues and concerns? Yep. Do you, do you have any more? Nope. So just, uh, this is informational more than anything. Eric Osgood reached out to me. He and David Williams have been discussing things that might be able to be done to kind of comprehensively plan for floods. Um, all the way up and down the river corridor, which is something that, you know, Beth and I talked about at the LCPC board meeting the other night. Um, he basically asked if I would reach out to LCPC. The letter is, they're, they're working on a letter, and the letter would be sent to select boards up and down the Le Moyle River Basin for all the towns and some other agencies and entities. He's basically wondering if LCPC would agree to act as a initial, at least, um, coordinator of a meeting. I mean, it could even be a Zoom meeting. Uh, so it's just by way of information, I'm going to reach out to Tasha and see if, if LCPC is interested in taking that on. But it's, the effort is Eric and David Williams, um, not, not our effort. And they would probably include Hardwick. They would include the in every town up and down the river the basin. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. So it really involves four different regional okay. planning commissions, multiple counties. Um, okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. Any other issues or concerns? Um, I got a letter. I just gave you a copy. I just opened it today about. Um, I haven't read it yet. It's just a brief, it's just the, there's a need for our um, the seniors in our town, local senior citizens, to have a place to meet and the impact of not being able to meet because of the missile building being occupied and just um, not as a complaint but just as an opportunity to try to find places for them to meet 
And then I was going to reach out to Jeannie, if you guys are okay with that, and see if the downstairs of the lodge might be open outside of hours, the library, but just we could creatively come up with a place for them to gather uh, since the municipal building is, is not available anymore. Is that you guys okay if I did that? Obviously, no decision. Uh, reaching out to Jeannie. Jeannie? Yeah. Jeannie. Yeah. Jean. Library? Yeah. Jeannie Yeah. 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 Availability. If, I mean, I think the lodge is the most sensible spot, but is that what this is all about? Yes. Okay. Totally. Didn't even cross my mind. That's amazing. Okay. okay. If you've covered it, I'm good. We'll see you later. Um, plan purchases. Land book record book approval. So, have you and Rosemary and Susan discussed uh, which firm? I mean, if both we, firms cover. We did not. Um, today was much busier than I anticipated. And so we, we looked at both options. And um, if you look at them, they're, they're not apples to apples. They're two different processes. And I think um, Rosemary and Sue need to come up with an idea of what they want the future of that book to be. And I think one, if we could bump this to the 16th, that would be best. Um, if there, there may be pressing time for, this is falling under the FEMA reimbursement. Um, and so if there was an approval maybe for an up to amount, not to exceed, that, that might be beneficial so they could move forward. Um, only in the, in the event that Ron needs that number sooner is my only concern with the municipal RFP going out. But I think we could probably wait to the 16th as well. That's all. I motion to approve an expense for record preservation of book number 14 in an amount not to exceed $1,351.50 contingent upon uh, FEMA reimbursement approval. What was the number again? $1,351.50. And that's, um, and did you get the contingent approval? FEMA reimbursement approval. One, one process is just rebinding the book that was ruined, and the other process is an actual restoration of the, each individual page. But that's the larger sum, so. Exactly. That, includes, that is in the 1351. That's in the 1351. And just the conversation needs to evolve around the usability of both processes, right? It has to be available for land record research. And so if the $500 one is not going to meet that requirement, then we have to move forward with the 1351. That's, that's just the conversation that hasn't happened. The book is in the freezer uh, in that per co-file. And so that's why we, can't, we have to all meet at the same time. We can't just take a look at it individually. Um, so I don't think there's been a second yet to your motion, has it? Has not. Okay. So would you like to make a second? I'm going to second it for the purposes of discussion. Okay. And discussion? Then have, and then I have a discussion piece. So can we assume that the $500 quote is just to deal with the flood-related aspect of damage to the book? I don't know that we know the full scope of how how damaged it is um, because of the state that it's stored in. Um, Sue and I took it out the other day and looked at it. And, and so I used to do pre a lot of preservation annually in my previous. And it's frozen, so you don't want to like, you don't want to start. Right. You got it, right? Pages You're are sticking apart. Yeah. And so we just need to make sure what's there. And then there's another option that's not on the table is if, if ink bled. Hopefully they used India ink and not. Uh, more recent type. If that ink bled, then it's probably talking to Visara and having a new book printed off the microfilm. And so it's just working on what is the best for that. The future use of that book is for land records research, right? And so making sure whatever that decision is has that use is achieved. You can't. You don't want to restore a book that's all bled because you can't use it for research. Um, it's not a historical artifact, but it's actually a working document that needs to be available to the public. Well, I would argue that it's both. But, uh, <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but I, get, I get your point. So my, yeah. the reason I asked the question was um, we have a normal budget to deal with 
restoration of land records. There's a yeah. dollar a page fee that's collected for that. Yes, um, statutorial recording. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I guess I'm fine with restoring the book. I guess my caveat would be that your caveat about a FEMA approval would be If it costs more than FEMA is willing to reimburse, I think that's a Rosemary decision whether to fix the book according to her needs for yeah. Yeah. records. So, so propose an amendment, please. Um, I would propose just eliminating the sentence or phrase about contingent on FEMA approval. You got that, Donna? Yep. Friendly amendment from me. I, I gotta be honest. I'm gonna heavily rely on Rosemary and Susan's. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and since yeah. I seconded, I agree to the perfect friendly. You're amendment. the one that proposed the friendly amendment. Any I more discussion? It. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I know you don't see this on your list, but purchasing safety equipment. Uh, Dean sent an email. Do we see need that to approve that? I mean, it's yeah. underneath our We don't need to, but I would like to just talk about one thing, and that yeah. one thing is we purchased a bunch of safety vests for flood items. I'm wondering if we can or should we use, reuse them. I have and just get four that are still in the packets. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. Would, would they be able to, could we save the cost of the safety vests if you had four that were in the packet? And they simply transfer the lettering onto the back of them? Oh, sure. If they're applicable sizes, uh, one is for one is a 5XL, uh, and then I have two larges down. You have an XL and a large. XL. And then a 5XL should be. So the. But yeah, totally. That should fit the large and the extra large. Those, those vests, Dean, are in, in the. In the foyer to the building, there's a kind of a maroon box. Mm -hmm. Those vests are in that maroon box. So you can take a look and sure. see if any of them, if they work. Um, and if they don't, I would move to approve the request. I don't think we need a motion. Yeah. Uh, it's, right. it's underneath our procurement. Well, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, well, to be clear, our procurement know. allows for very specific purchasing agents, of which Tom is one. So Tom can purchase. You, as animal control, cannot. And as rec coordinator, you can. <laughs> so <laughs> just to complicate things. Don't get confused. Uh, yeah. yeah. But Tom can help you with like signing off on it. And yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see Rosemary, although, oh, they do see Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Sorry. Um, no, we don't have speakers. So, Rosemary, if you want to speak, um, yeah. come off mute, and I'll need to just coordinate with Tim. Okay, uh, 10 cents in the grand list. Questions, concerns. Maybe we should go back to. What's the request? Here. Maybe we should go back to end uh, of year. Rosemary checked in with us last meeting, and I had just asked uh, to delay it one week uh, to see if there was follow up from the village on their offer in writing with River Road East. Have, have they followed up with us on that? Follow up on River Road East, and this is for the the. Uh, Underground. Uh, well, there. Well, last time we had a joint meeting, there were. It was just confusing with the flood and everything, um, and I believe that the select board's request was that the village put their offers in writing. Yes. Um, I don't think I'm out of line. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, doesn't sound like that's happened yet, but. Eric's was off for two weeks too. Is he back? He's not back yet. So that would make sense that it hasn't happened. Can we delay this 10 cents until we... It's due November 1st. Well, we yeah, so we can delay. 
for you. I mean, we don't have to do it tonight, right? Well, we have our second meeting of the month automatically, and then we need to talk about the okay meetings. And this isn't the agenda item. Can I ask an naive question? Wait, 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 wait. So right now is our first meeting. Our regular second meeting is on the 16th. I'm not planning to have a flood meeting next week. I don't think we have enough content for it. I know you're very sad. Um, unless you really all want to, but I don't see. I'm not going to be here anyway. So I'm not going to be here anyway either. either. It's up to you three. Oh. So, uh, and I was thinking that. Taxes <laughs> so I was thinking the end of the month we would keep a flood meeting, like the last month, um, the last Monday of the week. month. Mm -hmm. I'll just let you know I won't be able to make that be, meeting. The 26th. Yeah, the 26th. I have a different thought. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Let me finish my thought. Okay. And then that would be our last, like, special flood meeting. And then going forward, we just carry through with the first and the second. Could I throw mine out there? Yeah, eventually we'll move to one. So my thought is that flood is bleeding into regular <laughs> meetings anyways. We had an item uh, about FEMA buyout, which is directly related to the flood, and we're kicking that two weeks to a regular meeting. That's fine. Yep. But being that floods are bleeding into our regular meetings, an end of October meeting, I feel would be a good time to do a first review of the budget or at least talk about the budget because we're going to be. I don't four mind or five using meetings that that's meeting done. for that personally. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't think we can. I do, I do think we need that extra meeting because we our meetings have been full. Regardless of what the topics are, they're still full. Um, and then. November will play it by ear. Usually going into December, we're having funky meetings anyway around budget and the beginning of January. Well, the, <coughs> doesn't the budget usually need to be uh, approved hard, by like July, 10th, January 10th? We have a hard like January 16th. Is it 16th? Year, okay. Like yeah. Rosemary's off mute. Okay. Can we, I'm going to put you a speaker on. Tim's going to turn the microphone off. We we'll usually do like. Rosemary. Hello? We can hear you. <laughs> you can I hear can't you. hear any. You guys. I know. Yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> Ready, Tim? I'm going to turn the speaker off. Should be writing things on um, Rosemary, you can't hear us because we have to go on mute when I turn my speaker on. We literally can't hear anyone on the Zoom unless we mute ourselves and I turn my speaker on. So that's why. So in a second, I'm going to turn my speaker back on and you're going to have the floor. And when you're done talking, we'll switch back. For 10 cents on the grand list, right? So, yeah, whatever you want to tell us. But the question is, no, the question is... What is our deadline for budget? And the second question is, um, for the 10 cents in the grand list, what are your thoughts? Um, the budget has to be done before the fourth week of January, before we have to go to print. And um, I don't believe Eric is back until the middle of next week. And I have not heard anything from the trustees regarding this. Okay. So we can take it up in two weeks. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks, Rosemary. And yeah, we'll pick up the 10 cents in the grand list in two weeks, unless you have any objections. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take my turn my mic off and speaker on. Sam, are you ready? We, yeah, I think that will be fine. No, we'll still get it paid before the 1st of November. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. What were you going to say, Mark? I was going to say, so does that mean, I gather the fourth week in January is the drop dead for the... Like, we, we need to be solid. We should just say mid-January. We need to be solid. Okay. And there is, there is a timeline for the uh, publication of the table warning. Yeah. And I, that 
But that is not the last week in January. I don't yeah, know. it's that's to go to it's print. Early. It's 10 days before town meeting. You have to have the warning out. If you don't have the warning out, you have to mail the town report to every resident. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So, well, we, which we do anyway. We mail the town report to every resident. No, we don't. No, really? No, we don't mail it to every resident. Well, we mail it to every... Mm -hmm. I've yeah. always... Do you get it? Yeah. Everybody so gets it, that. it's every resident. Do. So you guys might as well wait till the day before town meeting. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so no, we need to have our, we need to have everything. We should have everything to the auditor, auditors by mid month anyway, if we can at all, if it's at all possible, because they have a lot of work hours. to do to compile everything. We don't. Um, okay. Yeah, and and they're the other portion of the plus all the reports for committees, special parts for committees. Yeah. The thing we do need to do now that it's October is we need, no way. we do need you to start drafting the budget yep. because you need to send it out to all of the different committees and the committees need to weigh in on what their projections are for year end and sorry we're not year end what their projections are for this year this fiscal year and what they think their next fiscal budget is going to look like and it gets confusing for committees so you're probably going to have to handle for a couple. Not a problem. Um, yep. So that needs to happen too. Pretty soon, because we need to start considering that in the November meeting. What? I love the budget process. When we have our first budget meeting, well, we should have a conversation about estimating those year-end expenses and transitioning into a different process because we're, in theory, having annual audits now. <clears throat> you and I can have a conversation about it. It's very complicated. <clears throat> but it's a real pain in the butt to figure out the... You're talking about the estimated cash on hand portion. Which, which ultimately gets into the question of estimating your yeah. year-end spending. Right. Yeah. I love it. It's October. We're talking yeah. about planning We're talking about next year for something. From now almost. Yep. Three quarters Talk from about now. planning for something okay. to present in March based so on the the grand list. Stuff for the next year. We're gonna we're gonna wait to get that from the village. Okay. Can you just follow up on what you I have difficulty wrapping my head around things sometimes. The 2023 cash on hand is end of fiscal year 22, right? The title just might be wrong. This yeah. is as of 22 now. It's as of June 30th. It's 30. as of June 30th. June 30th. So then now we're in fiscal year 22. FY 23 is the year that ends. Because oh, it's ending. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. So this is cash on hand as of. July 1, which was before the flood. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's ask Rosemary to speak to this, actually. Can Tim, can, Rosemary, um, we're going to just ask, can you walk us through cash on hand, where we were at the end of the year, where we are now, and help us digest uh, flood spend very specifically? Uh, we're going to give you the floor. You'll do all the talking. <laughs> we'll just listen for a few minutes until you're done. Okay. At um, June 30th, 2023, we had a cash balance of $1,142,038. Um, Where is that? That's right there. It's at the top. Okay, I do not have that sheet. Of that... There was $901,265 that are reserved out for different projects, which left a cash balance of $240,773.12 and delinquent taxes of $126,991 for 
for a total available of $367,765. And the board had reserved from last year's budget 125000 to reduce taxes, $16,057 to buildings and grounds, $40,143 to the um, reappraisal fund, and $12,043 to both the capital equipment fund and matching grant funds for a total of $205,286, which left a budget, which left an uncommitted amount of $162,479, of which the voters approved $40,000 for the economic position, which you have not spent that money. So it left a grand total of uncommitted of $122,000 $479. Um, thank you, Rosemary, for all of that. And we have spent far beyond that in flood expenses already. And we have started collecting, um, we've started collecting taxes also for this fiscal year. So in terms of cash flow, where are we when it comes to cash flow? Are we at a position where we need to consider using that, um, um, sorry. Tax anticipation reserve? No, well, either, either the tax anticipation reserve or we gave approval early on in the flood to open up a um, line of credit. So are we in a position to either spend from that cash reserve or use our line of credit? Tim, can you get us again? I don't think we need a line of credit. Um, the state was, um, they gave us all our pilot money and three-fourths of this highway to state aid money ahead of time and all our um, current use money. So we have that money, which we didn't expect until November time frame. They do that because we got flooded. Okay, thanks, Rosemary. That is super helpful. So that that gives us plenty of cash on hand currently. So. Probably. And then we also had, sorry, just to add on to that cash flow, there's also another line here that is Town of Johnson cash receipts. It says one of two, but I only have one page. It's like the second was a blank page, that one. Um, which was an additional report total of $10,000 and 50 cents, um, which included flood metal, metal being cashed in at 1,450 cents. Um, it looks like a donation, maybe, from Patricia Van Wert, and also from Stanley Lane um, for a, a combined total of 1100 plus the Vermont Community Foundation providing debris management donation of $7,500. I recall that the cannabis people were talking about cutting a check for $10,000 to us, too. They were. They yeah. did. They have done it already? No, they were. They, were talking they about said it. they would be willing to. Yeah. We might I'll need that. Follow that, though. That might not be a bad thing to follow up on. Is that something? I don't think I have their emails. Carl? I think the thing is, I probably have it. The thing is, like for me, I don't want to solicit anything. I, I, I certainly don't. You don't want to what? Solicit, like they all they volunteered it, but asked us to ask for it. Like that's the part that makes me feel funny about it. I don't want to solicit from a business owner very specifically because I don't want to put us in a position that we are. We could be there could be a view of conflict of interest. That's where I'm kind of at. Yeah, especially when 
even though it is somewhat of a rubber stamp, we will be asked to sign off on their retail license at some point. And we already, I thought we already did that. No, they no, just came they to came, meet us. Oh, they yeah, they just came <laughs> to meet us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, they made that offer at a public meeting. I just they did. I just I I understand your concern, and I, and we can just um, be patient. Yeah. Yeah, and I want I want to just I, I know you guys are really worried about the cash flow thing. Um, just bear in mind, we haven't gotten any um, reimbursements from. FEMA or the state yet. We will. Um, and I have every expectation based on past experience that will be made largely whole, um, you know, on the expenses. So we've spent a lot of money, but there's going to be a lot of money coming back in through the reimbursement process. So. Yeah, I'm not worried about that part. I'm just worried about the year over year cash flow aspect of it. But I don't doubt that we'll get largely reimbursed. Yeah. But that may trickle in over quite a, quite a long period of time, I assume. I would expect that we would have the majority of the funding within the current budget year that we're in. Yeah. We're going to try to close okay. out. Um, yeah, but we're having that's, an that's till next July. Yeah. We're having a meeting. Um, hasn't been scheduled yet for an inspection of five of the ten damaged sites. And once that meeting's done, those are going to get closed out and reimbursed relatively soon. It's the projects that are going to take longer are the buildings that still need contractors to visit. Mm -hmm. right. Have we been reimbursed for the um, trash? No, I don't believe so. Nothing. I think that's one of the closeouts. That's got to be. That's one of the closeouts. That's substantial. I that we're, really that like we're to trying that. to. Sixty-nine thousand dollars, Mark. The brief. Hmm? That's what it, in the, the budget breakdown that we got, there's, towards the end of it, um, there's a breakdown of uh, how much we spent on the flood stuff. I really have to review it. Well, it's just, you it's know, it's just payroll. I don't know how we build a budget with this, this amount of stuff hanging out there. Well, that's, um, uh, uh, is Rosemary still there? Yeah. I mean, one of the things... Yeah, that, we're, that we're trying to do with that those ARPA funds and is when this it goes into the general ledger um, those funds will be used to bridge the gap between FEMA reimbursement and end of year um, costs. If we choose to if, do that. Yes. That's you know, an option. And so we you voted to move it into the general fund and so that's there and so now the voters have to come, go and march and they'll learn about the options, what's the best to do, whether to move the surplus, which might be the whole amount of FEMA or it might not, into a reserve fund. And, um, and then there's options of using that to, to re how do you reimburse that reserve fund from future years unexpended funds. But hopefully we're all reimbursed so there are no future year unexpended funds. All right. You know, but there's that, but then that's way our, the voters aren't left in a hole because we have that blessing of these, those ARPA funds that were just moved yeah. in. But you can also treat it as, a, as an accounts receivable. Um, so if we, if we know what the amount, if we simply haven't been paid by the close of the right. fiscal year, we can treat that as, you know, as accounts receivable. Yeah. Um, well, I maybe. Yeah, I would. I would certainly hope that we would be for for everything, but it, some of that's going to depend on like the RP we're talking right. about tonight. Right. When that work actually gets done, whether there's a contractor out there who's available to do it, yep. you know, no, there's I a lot it, of a lot of moving pieces. Does anyone have call questions for the end of year that we got last week? I have is that the one. Bro? Well, the end of year, end of fiscal year, twenty three. The the one that's entitled the um, cash might on be hand. More than just no, no, not cash on hand, just the oh. budget. Oh, okay. Yeah. Unless you have that's more right. on cash on hand. Well, the one questions. one thing I had on cash on hand, which we can convey to Rosemary, is um, right now she's deducting the forty thousand that was approved from the amount that is cash on hand for the community economic development. 
position and because it's allocated. Well, it was yeah, it was, it was approved as as a right. yeah. so, but it ends up being part of the cash on hand. So she's right now reserved that out yeah. from the total amount. In that, since we didn't, since it was raised and we didn't spend it, we need to have a discussion about whether or not we want to use that forty thousand. Whether that, whether we treat that as part of the cash on hand or whether we reserve it, or we apply it to our salaries. Yes. I mean, the, the no, I don't think we need to have it tonight. I think I think it's a right. I just wanted to point out that she's showing it as okay. reserved out. Yeah. And and it may or may not be that, that we end up doing that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any questions about budget year end though? I don't think so. No. Are you sure? You asked the question. An email. When? Oh, I asked. I mean, this the cash on hand answers my question. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, I think the cash on hand statement's a lot easier to understand than. Yeah, I was, I was a little bit lost. And is this? I mean, yes. Where's the paving holdover and all that? Show. I just have to look at it. If I have a question. I could always ask. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Rosemary, do you have anything else you want to add for cash on hand or budget year end? Can you mute us? Ed, all the paving reserves have been used for this past paving cycle. Oh, because we spent all of last. She can't hear you, but it's because there was about one hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars. Again, that's where multiple years just confused me because if we're, we combine the paving for last year was over three hundred thousand dollars. Right. But we, took the area. Oh. Can we, can no, we no, 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 no. That's fine. We okay. spent four fiscal years worth of money on the paving, so I was just trying to track how that one but went the out. The last of it was applied to our fiscal year twenty three. So when fiscal year twenty three closed. It no longer stayed in cash in hand because it's applied to our budget. It's been applied. Like gotcha. it's there. I see it now. It took me a second. Okay. Rosemary, do you have anything else that you want to point out on end of year budget or cash on hand? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, nope. uh, sounds good. And then current budget status. It said we're good on current budget status. Okay, cool, thank you. Jason, uh, actually I should ask Rosemary, sorry, I need to ask her one last question. Rosemary, is there anything else that you had on your list, no licenses or anything else you need from us? Yeah, I didn't have any tobacco or liquor licenses this month. Okie doke, thank you very much. Okay, Jason Whitehill will attend. Left, just in time. Uh, okay, Jason, you ready? Sure. Is Rosemary still there? Rosemary is still there. Can she hear us? Yep. So I have a. Go ahead, can, we, can you? we? I have a question on the um, reserve fund, the sheet that you gave us, the 2023 cash on hand on the on the back or the, the second page, there's a reserve fund balances. Um, I'm looking at the Union Bank reappraisal fund, which currently has the 44 in it. I'm assuming that the 40,000 that we reserved out in the current year budget has not been added to that. 44, is that, would that be correct? Meaning, what you're saying is that, meaning fiscal year end 23 should have an additional 40,000 in there, is what you think? Well, I'm thinking that when we get to budget season, we're actually going to be looking at a reserve fund balance of 
80, upwards of 80,000. 84. Yeah, 84,000 instead of 44,000. Gotcha. Okay, Rosemary, is that correct? Yes, by the end of the fiscal year, we'll have over 80,000 in there. Yeah, because you, like, you don't see the grant match reserve fund in there. Right. Yeah, so all four of these. Good. Transfer. We're approved by the voters for the transfer. That's right. what I see in my head. That's what Perfect. I'm assuming. So these are all plus whatever X. Okay, cool. The emergency fund is probably pretty low right now. Could be. <laughs> it doesn't, it's probably got to be. I need to build that one up. <laughs> okay, um, Jason, what's your topic? Sorry, Jason. No, it's fine. Uh, they grab a little bit. Okay. What you got? Uh, so a little bit more information on the pit, uh, and I talked to Chip Percy, uh, technically Tom was on the other end with me when we were talking to him and we were discussing the pit and the size of the pit and the limitations on processing some of the stuff with the current size of the pit and how small it is. Um, and Chip brought up a good point with uh, crushing. We'd have to have a Act 250 permit because that pit wasn't a crushing pit. So they couldn't crush there. So he gave me some numbers and he hasn't, I hadn't got the paper or the hard copies yet, but the numbers that he gave me were uh, it was going to be $6 a yard if they did the screening. So they could only screen it and they could screen it there on site. And then we'd have to provide the trucks three trucks and a loader to haul it out. That was one option. The second option... So they'd screen it before crushing it? They would screen it is all they could do there because they couldn't technically crush there because it's not in the Act 2... It wouldn't, doesn't have an Act 254 crushing. So they'd crush the overrun? They would buy the overrun from the town. And haul it. We have to haul it, like we've always done. Up to them yeah. to be crushed. It would be pretty, because of the size of the pit, that hauling was really labor intensive. But so it would be on demand for them rather than. Uh, I'm just going to correct what Mark said. But they're not crushing it. They're just buying the overrun. Option and one. And it's theirs. Yeah. Okay. But we have to haul it to them. Yeah. For them to pay us. Option so, two is. Go ahead. The option number one is just them screening it for $6 and. Six dollars. Six dollars even. Does that include the two dollars the town pays? So does it's not eight dollars. It's eight dollars a yard. yard. Yep. But they do it by the ton or the yard. They're doing it by the yard for us at in the pit because that's how we. Okay. okay. Using their screener. They're using their screen setup, yeah. And their, their their excavator would be doing the feeding of the screen. For so they basically be doing the work in the pit. Yes, we wouldn't need to be. M Shaw open for that, but we'd have to supply them with the porta potty. And the sign in's already there, so option two is we don't have to involve M Shaw if we pull bank run out. So we can load our trucks, we can take it to them. This is all of an option two. And they'll do the processing of it. So for every two loads we bring them, we get a load back. And we can either get it back in winter sand or crushed gravel. And they'll supply the excavator in this deal of option two to mine the material out of the pit because the space is limited. Why would they do that? And then ask us to use our excavator. We don't have an excavator, so that's probably why there. But uh, they, because he know Chip saw the pit and knows how okay. time consuming it's going to be to get the material up out of the hole where it is and now so option number two is essentially just driving trucks Op for us would be just taking the material out paying two dollars a yard for every yard coming out and we're think chip thought and i thought there's anywhere from seven to ten thousand yards left there depending on how where the ledge is and how it's going to show itself once we get down to that lower level we don't know exactly where the ledge is going to we know where it is on the upper half we don't know where it is on the lower half yet so you maybe got two years worth of gravel left yeah well if we or two years worth of sand technically the fractured 
stuff is a superior product for the road. It walks at Wickham Island is a perfect example. The fractured versus the gravel out of our pit, it's just round rock. It doesn't have the same compaction or hold, so. Um, do we know what the cost of these two are, like side by side? Because there's there's cost when it co comes to running our trucks in terms of labor and vehicle, right? And then there's also cost of employee. That's labor. Uh, but there's also like their screening in both cases. The second case does they do crushing? Crush. Yeah, that there crushing on, on their site. Right. When we say the two for one, like I assume one is more expensive than the other. Can we always choose the more expensive option for the return? Like, what does this look like when we run out numbers? As far as as far as total cost, like cost to the town. So I think I don't just mean like soft numbers, like. Like, I understand what you mean by the yard, totally get it, but there's going to be a difference between us hauling overrun and us hauling every load out without it being screened first, for example. The first option actually puts more pressure on the highway department is because of the tightness of the pit, as it came through the screen, the, the, their lo the town's loader and the town's truck has to get it out of their ASAP because there's not enough room for their escalate. So it's actually option one. It's the same number of truck trips, whether you're hauling it from, whether you're hauling it screened or whether you're hauling it unscreened, it's the same amount of material that has to be moved by the town. The distance is slightly greater. So what do you prefer? Correct, you, yes. You folks who are the professionals, what's the best option? My honest opinion, the best option is the second, the second one because it gives us the ability to haul it there at our schedule, because they would need us for three weeks tied to them if we have them come in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Too. So that we haul it up to them, and he gives us a credit, or he can give us a yeah. check. He said, or uh, so we'd be buying. I believe it's the equivalent. It's over the scales, but it's equivalent of about four dollars a yard, and then. We would buy it back at six dollars a yard and the two dollars to NATO. Is that correct? Yeah, he did it in tons when we brought it up. So oh. it would, and they charge us twelve dollars a ton for stuff. So it'd be half. The equipment would be half because the processing of it. And as far as the trucking, to answer your question, we have to truck it out, no matter what, and then we have to truck the oversized to NATO or NATO's Percy's. So we're actually. Just cutting out the trips to the stockyard, our lower staging area, with doing it the option too. It's been a while since I've done that. I think the trucks cost like a dollar and twenty cents a mile or something. Yeah, you have to look at the That's roughly cats, like forty-five to forty-eight dollars an hour for employee. But I don't think, given the distances, that makes a huge difference. Say, as you, from NATO's, usually we can get in an eight-hour day, it's 20 to 22 loads. And out of the pit, it's 25 to 26 loads on a day is what we've done in the past. And that's, you know, stopping the break. That's and screening it? That's, that's hauling, just hauling. When you're screening it, if usually we have to screen it a day or two ahead of time to get a surge pile to keep the trucks ability to haul and be able to still screen at the same time with our with our reach screen. Option two just gives it we can haul it up. They do all the processing. That eliminates us for the MSHA and all the compliance of that. That gets the gravel out of there. That gives us a place to put all of the ditching material that people don't take. Fire is the wild parsnip. The Japanese not weak because it's all down in the hole that's going to be sealed over and capped when it's done. If you like option two, I like option two, and the on your own schedule very much appeals considering mm -hmm. to me, considering our grant work that we have to do and everything else. I like and option really. two because of the crushing. They can crush it because he didn't have room enough to bring a crusher in over there, even yeah. when they're small crushers. And Colic, I reached out to them and they were going to get back to me because they like to see at least a 10,000 yard pile to do. Right. And then they're the same thing. They have to have an Act 250 fires for crushing if we're going to crush there. And the other, the other nice thing about option two 
is it obviates the need to get a write-off from BERT while allowing the crusher to go into the pet. Yep. Because if we're basically hauling it out, <clears throat> there is no crusher in our pet. Yeah, there's no MSHA anymore. There's So there's five people not being certified for 25 hours a year for that. The person who's going to bring over his machine for the option 2-2 to, to yeah. get it to prep it for the town. There might be an opportunity to work with Percy, whether through credit or through just payment, to just prepare the pit for for fill to be returned. Yeah, to we just, used to years ago. We, we would spend twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars for an excavator in the pit. I want to make a motion that we write up a contract with Percy's for the bank run out hauling two loads for one, um, based on the option two that Jason described. Second. Any discussion? I want, I want more clarification on that. We bring two loads over and get one back. How's that? Well, he's going to give us, it, it's going to be the, the cost of the material so far as he, like winter sand, for example, is $12 a ton. So they're going to give us half of the value. So it'd be $6 a ton, technically, is what he said he was going to give for the product because obviously they have to process it. They have to screen it and crush because they put crushed uh, stone in there too. My motion is to write up a contract so we can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Not sign one. Do we need a contract? Yeah, I think we need an agreement, yeah. Definitely. Do we need a motion right now? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know if you need it. Well, it's been motion. made in second to but we have one on the write up an agreement. I want to though. I want to give Jason permission to Jason and Tom commission to work with Percy's on writing up an agreement. I'd like to see what it looks like on paper. I don't think it's bad. <laughs> I don't think that's a bad idea. I think it's a good idea because something could change if, if we don't get it out this fall and something happens. It's going to be credits changed. involved, I think. Yeah. I think they just they got plenty of storage up there, <clears throat> so you can just haul it to them whatever you want. Yeah, and the good thing is for us is we'd haul it up like when it's raining out this fall and stuff. We could just Right. Haul it. Okay. Move the questions. What? Move, Move the questions. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Move the questions. Sure. There's a little eye. And we'll, we'll see the draft. Your, your ideas. We'll see a contract back to, for actual signatures. Okay. Yeah. Contract. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Thanks, Jason. No problem. You can hang out for the rest of our meeting if you want. If I'm not needed, I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know same why. With, with okay, uh, liquid fuel good results. The bids were returned to a fuel broker. Only course, uh, course and Fred's decided to bid. All the companies passed the opportunity. Both course and Fred's are our current suppliers. Or to consider moving ahead with agreements with course and Fred's. So, very specifically, course doesn't have an A in it, by the way. Well, very specifically, uh, this is about fuel oil, came from I assume? Yes. It's not about any other fuel? Um, well, it's fuel oil and all. Fuel and propane. Okay. And propane, yes. And propane Fred's is on here. Uh, so, but, course bid only for uh, fuel oil, I believe. And no. Course didn't bid on propane? I have to... I thought that I thought we didn't have propane. Well, of course, bid on ULSHO and ULSD and propane. Okay. What ULSD is? Ultra low sulfur diesel. That's a guess. I think you nailed it. ULSHO. Ultra low sulfur heating, heating oil. oil. Yeah. Even though they're the same thing. They have different acronyms and different prices. No, they're the same price. No, they're different prices. <laughs> they, they Am I keeping you guessing, Donna? They? <laughs> they should be the same price. They come on the same truck. One's got dye and one doesn't. And I think they both do. Do they both have dye? Yeah. I think the heating fuel doesn't have to. Might not have well, to. We, I've it, always well, seen it with it. But we can burn, burn non-dyed fuel in our trucks because they're municipal. 
Yeah, they you guys both. buy, yeah. do you buy off road, off road or do you have a diesel tax exemption? Jason, come back. Because we're municipal, we. They've, I think we have a tax exemption, but we also can burn off road. We can burn off road diesel in our I'm municipal. Pretty cars. sure that's what they do because they yeah. pull it up to the paint that's out behind. Okay, but we're not doing propane, correct? I thought the village was doing Right, the original kind of agreement was the town was going to select a fuel purchaser and the village was going to select a propane purchase or agent, company, sure, whatever it is. Okay. I mean, we're the village it purchases the majority of the propane. The town purchases the majority of the fuel oil. Yeah. So, and neither one would be looking for a higher price. Yeah. We're, we're, I think we're just seeing it all together because you know the firm probably sets it all. And I think at our joint board meeting, the board agreed to put the propane out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. This was when I first started and I couldn't make that joint meeting. Right. That we okay. we yeah. approved our side, they approved their side. Right. Got it. So, do we need to have the village in order to approve the bid, or we can approve it first and then they can? They gave they us the ability to approve our side, and we gave them the ability to approve their side. But well, my point is that they need to see this. So are you going to send this to Eric if they're going to do the parking? Okay. And Fred's really is, are they actually delivering to us? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, Grasso needs to stop delivering to us. Yeah. That's the big message. Did we purchase um, any fuel this week? Grasso keeps, keeps, I didn't see anything like that in there. I didn't either. Um, keeps delivering oil to us, but we don't want them to. We're also keeps reduce. delivering oil that you don't want. Yeah, well, we, they do I expect payment. I think there was a Auto failure on the part of the... It might have been a communication breakdown. Might have, yeah, it was a, a communication breakdown between various parties where Brasso just continued delivering This fuel. is for heating fuel? Heating yes. fuel and And, and, and the contract fuel. was given to Fred's. But it wasn't actually executed within a period of time, so I don't really think we actually had the contract. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Fred's is our current supplier, but I'm getting that. It's, I think Brasso. that's right. So I think you need to get in touch with Brasso Fuel and say, yeah. because they, they, they declined to submit a proposal, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you'll have to get okay. in touch with Brasso to tell them. The successful bidder on this was Fred's. Okay, but we haven't. Okay, well, we, we have to do it right we now. Decided. So, yeah. do we have a motion? I I I don't have the. I know you sent it to us, but I don't have it in the packet. It's on, it's on the back of the page. It is eight. Yeah. Which one? It's, uh, page eight. Page. You like the page numbers? New new edition. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. oh my gosh. I was in the office like how did how do you go from this to how do you go from three I to printed, nine? I printed it so much faster. Oh, I'm trying okay, to like, make it new. This is my pack here. So who's the low bidder on the fuel? Fred's. That's Fred's. too goddamn small for me to It's Fred's. <laughs> Fred's energy. Fred's is is by a penny by a ten cents ish. Are they? And is that nine based cents. on a, an over the rack price or a fixed gallon price? It says adder 50 cents, and then it says cost plus price. Uh, so for ultra low sulfur heating oil, course fuels is $3.74.55 cents. Fred's energy is $3.65.9 cents. And somehow, the ultra low sulfur diesel is uh, 10 cents more a gallon, roughly. That's for the highway taxes. And I thought the last time we, we did this, we talked yeah, we with Fred's and they agreed to give us the same price for yeah. the diesel and so the heating just fuel. Ask. Yeah. yeah but How we I've done it in the past is that in the you file with the state a diesel fuel tax exemption, you get a two-year license, you submit it to Fred's, and then Fred's brings the, the diesel over undyed because newer trucks, sometimes you can risk waiting warranty if you use off-road diesel. So that's... I can work with Jason on that and however he wants to do it, but that's, you, there's two ways around it, but as you don't have to pay taxes and the price will always be the low price. And my understanding is there's no difference between the heating fuel and the diesel fuel. Yeah. But I mean, maybe there's, maybe there's... Well, they put a tiny bit of kerosene in home heating oil. In the wintertime, they, they do, yeah. Which is when we go through the majority. Mm -hmm. well, maybe not even the majority of our fuel. Okay, what are we doing? I, I would 
I would make a motion to approve the Fred's contract with the caveat that Tom work with them on the diesel versus tax and any any difference between heating and diesel fuel costs. I would like to say. Sorry, there's second? a motion on the floor. Are you gonna no, second it? I'm not. Who's going to second? I'll second. Okay. I would like to say that I do believe we signed a contract with Competitive Energy Services, and we should not waste our time with them in the future. It, it seemed promising. These are the same and prices we would have got. Yeah, these are the same prices we would have got. It, their, their fee is super small, but um, okay. it sucks if they ended up at the same spot we already were. Yep. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Wait, what was? Yeah, aye. Ayes have it. I don't Fred's even remember what your motion was. Fred's was the proposal. It was to go with Fred's. For fuel oil. Fred's. So for the pro Tom and propane, Justin. we should work with the village first, Tom, <coughs> and then maybe tell them both together. Do you know how often the village meets? They meet Monday. This Monday? Second Monday every month. Okay. Maybe I should go or zoom in. And tie it all together. Or you, you could it. give you, you could give this information to Kim. Now is okay. Eric's not going to be back for that meeting, is he? Maybe I'll call Ken and sit, sit, give him the heads up. Okay. This seems crazy that we don't buy fuel oil by the county. Okay, that's yes. not a time for now, though. So the market discussion on the market. Either. That's our next item. Sterling Market. Mm. Okay. Um, so every everybody saw the email. The email essentially just for the for the benefit for the benefit of the of the camera. Um, Ernie Pomelo indicated that uh, the Associated Grocers Board of Directors has indicated that they do not want to participate in the revitalization of the Sterling Market. So basically, Associated Grocers is pulling out. That leaves Ernie in the position of trying to figure out what to do next. My ask of you guys is, is this something that we should ask um, Randall. Randall to investigate or and or work with Ernie on next steps forward? In my opinion, personally, I think having a market in the village is really important. Um, so personally, I'm willing to support that. But I guess it's it's a question for you guys. Should we should we ask Randall to devote any time to? I I mean, for me, strong yes, but not exclusively with Ernie. Whatever that means, I don't know. You don't know what it means? I don't know what it means, but I do know that it's probably that's probably the lowest point in our town <laughs> when it comes to flood area. <laughs> like, what are they, like a five-year, ten-year flood range? They're not even close to 50, I don't think. Um, in uh, fairness, I believe you talked about it in a previous meeting that uh, Palmelo Properties was willing to do some additional flood mitigation efforts. Um, so I guess I'm with Beth. I'm supportive of uh, the town trying to get a market back and seeing if we can assist in, in that portion. But I don't think that should be the only focus. Yeah, I, if that spot is the spot and somebody's willing to work with Ernie and get it up and running, I'm all for it. But if they're, if they aren't, and there are other options, I don't think we should throw them off the table. And I'm all for Randall putting effort into this. Yeah, knowing what those other options are, we had a conversation with with, um, with an individual today in the in the offices where when Randall was there, and that individual was going to make a contact with Ernie and. It sounds like pie in the sky, but this individual's idea was go up, move, you know, move the market up, and, it's, and if, if it requires an elevator, um, you know, so be it. Um, but this individual is going to contact Ernie and actually explore that as a as a possibility or an option. So I, you know, would there, there be a slide? 
Could be. Could be uh, a water slide. slide. Yeah, right into that. Could be a water <laughs> slide. One, two and one. A two and one. You've been talking about that this whole time. Can you imagine? Well, I might get off the slide board if we get that. Really? <laughs> yeah, like mind blown. Mission success. As I recall, I mean, this is deja vu all over again. I mean, it isn't Palmer oil. He, he bent over backwards to over the, you know, keeping that building empty for years, basically. He did. It's finding a brochure. I mean, That's yeah, the big right. deal. It is a big deal. That is a huge deal. And we found Mike, was that in there? Coma. Yeah. He came in, and, and then he, he has since sold the source. Yes. To uh, all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the thing. I think Carlo has been very generous with us and will continue to be generous. It's finding somebody that wants to open a grocery store. Pay the rent. Yeah. And um, buy flight insurance. Yeah. Okay. And we already kind of discussed at a previous meeting about how doing that type of mitigation work, you know, some of it would maybe be affordable, but raising the building up or moving it to a different spot on the lot were kind of non starters for Ernie because it would just cost too much to whoever the eventual tenant was. Right. Well, he didn't talk, uh, the idea of moving it to a different location on the same lot is an entirely different proposal because it, it's, if you simply went up and maintained the same so footprint, the footprint, then you aren't triggering that to fit. You aren't triggering a whole lot of permit process. stuff. Right. You're just going up. Which you, you could actually be vastly improving the flood handling capabilities if the lower portion of the building were open and, uh, and allow for the floodwaters to freely, you know, move through. Float, floating building. A floating building. All right. So, so I, I so talked to Ben Doyle also, the Vermont Preservation Trust. I think it's Preservation yeah. Trust Vermont or something. Um, but I did talk to Ben a little bit too, and he basically said, however he and this group can help, they would be happy to be part of the process and help explore uh, revenue sources and help explore whatever it is that they can do um, to support us in this. And he very preservation, preservation trust. trust, yeah. I don't know what I said, but and uh, I think that would be really important because I, I, to your point, Shane, I, I don't think Pomelo can do the improvements that he needs to do and rent it at a price that a grocer can afford to pay for the market yeah, for the market catch area, catch area that we've got, yeah. the catchment area that we've got. So that's, that's the other part of that is not only finding somebody that's willing to do it, but finding somebody that can pay a per square foot rate, which is the equivalent of something that can be provided. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'll connect Ben and Randall, and you're connecting Ernie and Randall, sounds like? Or uh, I certainly can. Yep, I certainly can. Tom should be in there. Well, Tom has his own job, and we have an economic developer for a reason. Tom will, <laughs> Tom's Tom got will lots be going involved. I don't think likes it or not. That's true. Yeah, I, I agree that the Pomerlo building should not be the sole focus for Randall and the focus should be getting a market into the village as soon as possible and if that's the place then that's the place but there may be other options. Think outside the box if we can. Unintended. Okay. All right, so I think we're good. Is that yeah. work? Municipal building RFP and approval. This is a really, really long RFP. Um, I'll be back in a second since it's being recorded. I figure I can Okay. I like it. By and large, I like it. I had a couple of questions on the appendix piece. On the appendix piece? Yeah. Okay. Which was the, the specifications? And one, one really nitpicky comment on the first page where you refer to July 10th. 
Can we just strike 10 and just say the July, July flooding? Absolutely. Because I think yeah, it was actually it. the level that we had the worst part of the damage. True. And then the 12th, it didn't end. The other piece that I, I wonder about is it's page 11 of your packet, page 3 of the proposal, the evaluation criteria. I would suggest that we just strike the waiting. I didn't really love it, yeah. I you want to just get rid of the whole selection just, process? Just, yeah, I, I like the selection process part, but the evaluation criteria, I would just strike that. Just next the whole criteria wow. deal. Uh, I think it's fine to say that we can review the you know, individual proposal, this, et cetera. And later on, you talked about the ability, uh, the rejection of proposals. Town reserves the right to reject any or all proposals and negotiate with one or more parties. I think that's a very important part yeah. of the proposal and should stay in the way it should. And then the, the only other piece I had just questions about for, for you guys is um, under insulation, for one thing, it talks about install, replace with like materials. I thought we were talking about rock wall. So I went back and forth on my own with this because I would like to see rock wool go in and moisture resistant sheetrock even though it's going to be ripped out of the floods again. Um, but in talking on the last meeting when Ron was here, if that has to go through FEMA 406 because it's an improvement, I feel like it's not an improvement because it's so much alike, but I don't know how that works. I think if we addressed it as an equivalent R factor, Sure. Yeah. You're gonna That's have a R factor. R resistance to heat loss. But the R factor isn't stated in here either. Well, well rock wool is a higher R value. It so is. You're just, you're just, you're just gonna get fiberglass. Thinner, thinner rock wall. But you could put in you could put in three and a half inch rock wall instead of six inch fiberglass bat and end up with the same R value. Is that the same? It might be. I think it's close. Why? It's probably close. Just because we have to do it like what? Um, FEMA won't let us bump. I mean, it's a minimal cost to bump it up to six inch when you look at the scope of the project. Well, yeah, this this is part of a process. So once there's a, you get an RFP and a quote to replace to normal, and then FEMA looks at that and they'll say, okay, say it's 100,000. There's another option where they'll give you an additional 100,000 for mitigation efforts, and one of those mitigation efforts may be spray foam versus whatever, and, and that payment may come before the work is done. There's a risk, though, if you close out early, that that work may cost more than the payment, or you can run through and do actual costs, 87 and percent. Well, I think the other part that's really important is what insurance is going to pay. From VLCT? Yes. Yeah. And it's really important to know what type of policy, whether we had an agreed upon value or replacement cost or what. And that's something you're, you should look up. Yeah, I, the passive renewal documents um, just came across my desk yesterday, uh, actually Friday. And so that will have, we'll have last year's numbers in the renewal documents. Can we just put our hands on our current policy? Like, Absolutely. That's the super passive easy. stuff has been not fun. Have we seen a report from them on their adjuster, their adjuster's report? I'm not. I haven't. But what I'll do is I'll reply back to that and just say, hey, can you, can we also have X, Y, Z? And so you want the adjustment report for the all buildings, all sites? Yeah. And do we have updates on our claim? Like uh, all that stuff. And I think they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. We really need. We're, we're flying blind right, right now because, you know, FEMA reimbursement is one thing. Insurance reimbursement is another thing. If there's an agreed upon value, then we're limited to that number, whatever it is. And so FEMA works off a professional response to a, a procurement process to say this, really what this municipal right. RFP is establishes what the damage was for which FEMA will then reimburse it. cost to replace it in well, minus. Minus insurance. Exactly, yes. Right. But we don't even know the insurance. Like, insurance has been hard. We've asked for a lot and not had luck. So adjuster's values and process where we're at. 
I have a couple of questions. But it might be on the it might have it. it. Might just not. It might be on the portal and nobody's looked for it because yeah. everything's now. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm okay with with like materials. I mean, ideally, I'd like to see rock wool for insulation. Um, I don't know if we can get away with carpet tiles instead of commercial carpet, but I'm fine with whatever there. The pad, sure. I don't think the drywall should be listed as three eighths. It should just be with like material because it's not three eighths. Is it five eighths? I would think it would have to be five eighths. Commercial building, you, you would hope so. And um, the square footage for drywall. Just remove the size of drywall. Yeah, just, just, like just remove product. the size, that's all. You know, just it's like product. You want me to do, um, instead of carpet padding, uh, grade? Okay. Um, well, there's a, there's a problem there too since we're on that. Not not everything was carpeted. There was some tile. There's vinyl tile. Yeah. What if I say installation of flooring grade materials? And it's just like open to, and that'll be part of the. Yeah. The sure. Flooring grade materials. Our commercial grade materials are gone, and so that'll be that'll cover the lobby was an oleum and uh, offices beyond the window were carpet grade. Right? Great flooring. Yeah. The office yeah. The entire the entryway was. You would hope so. You would hope so. I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I hope haven't so. actually looked at it. I know I'm well, you can't, seeing. You kind of can't tell because it's all blue. My slab, I'm right. seeing multiple coats of same sealant. So one thing that I did notice, quantity-wise, calling out square footage is fine. It's hard to believe it's only 600 square feet insulation because of the size of the building, but regardless of that... Let them do the measuring? Well, there's no possible way that the insulation and the sheetrock are the same square footage because all the interior walls. There's more sheetrock square footage than insulation. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because not all those interior walls were insulated. Yep. So this... Well, yeah. I'll update. No, that's, that makes so much sense. No, they said that. Yep. Whatever works. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit of. But the interior. thing is, like, usually when they do this kind of thing, they should just pr provide us a square foot cost. Why put a quantity at all? Like, let them That's do the easiest. It's just. Probably well, just you have to have a ballpark if you want a square foot cost. Well, we're asking the contractor to fill this out so that we can make better decisions, and so we should have them give us the quantities, I guess. Is probably and don't you usually have like an open house, like we're having, you know, you can, viewing us between whatever times? Yep. Just business hours and times. I don't know how many people are going to attend, but... <laughs> the one bidder. Right. We've had interest from one person already, which is... So hopefully they're... Mark, are you bidding this one? Mm -hmm. We so can make a killing. So do we want quantities or no? Do we huh? want quantities? Because if we're not confident in the quantities, then why would we pick them? I agree. I don't know. I didn't go down there. Well, the, the problem, if you're going to do a, a competitive bid, um, then if we list, if we, if we are not showing the quantities, then we should have a column for the contractor to insert the quantities. And, and we should have some in a unit price. Um, so we get an apples to apples. So we get an apples to apples mm -hmm. comparison. So if one contractor is saying there's 1,200 square feet and the other is saying there's 1,800 square feet. Well, no, it's yeah, but what if he didn't have his left boot on? Right. Exactly. He's looking at it crooked. Okay, so. Yeah. The ideal situation is to specify the quantity and so everybody's bidding on the same quantities. The unit price is the same, and a bidder could come in and say, well, it wasn't 600 feet, there was 800 feet. Right. And you're going to pay the unit price on 800 feet. That's why it, you no. know, just, you know, measure should be fine, but oh, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Somebody's got to come to a resolution. If we're going to put quantities in, though, they've got to be right. Deal. Or I'm okay with levels. that, as long as they're double-checked. Do you want me to, I'll re recalculate. Or do you want me to remove or recalculate? I don't care. Consensus of... It doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter to me. I'll go with whatever. What do you want? Well, <laughs> recalculate. I think it's a lot easier to compare if 
everybody's looking at the same quantities. And you'll get more bids because people can't make site visits. Yeah. Okay. So just double check all the quantities then. Yeah. Okay. And then the maybe a delete item, I would assume delete. Yeah, it's just it'd be nice to have a contractor make that assessment. Was there any, do we have any belief that there was damage to the outside? No, but you know, I think it's maybe somebody goes through and you find like from the inside, as you're putting in insulation, you might find something. You know. But we could. You know, what if they find something we don't put in the RFP? And so, you know, this kind of puts a little bit of onus on them to take a look at that sheathing, but we can also believe. Um, what about electrical? That's Were we actually given the clear on electrical? That's a separate, that would be a separate RFP um, to replace. It's the same contractor's not going to do both. To replace what? The electrical. Any electrical damage. But was well, there any? Not, not known. Everything was above. There's a little bit of damage from when they ripped off the drywall, but it's pretty minor. I mean, it, I, I, So how are we covering electrical here then? Uh, so similar to the library, there was a general contractor in electrical. Um, we're going to have to go through and assess what is actually damaged and what isn't, and what's it. Do, you want, do we want an electrician to come in to do that? Um, and then the follow-up to that is, depending on how much there is, we might just move forward with the general RFP, which is the next agenda item. And then that process would cover the electrical at the municipal building. But that it, was where I was getting. Okay. Yeah. I got you. So do you need a motion to approve RS, RFP as amended or? And there's also the ad at the back page. The next page is the ad for the new citizen. Yeah. So this is this is actually for the general. Um, oh, that's general. Okay, this is sorry. a general female RFP. So this is, this Wait, had sorry, a. sorry, I, I, sorry, I jumped ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, how exciting. Municipal RFP, yes, let's do it. What's that? Motion. What? Are you gonna get one? Sure. I did. Uh, motion to approve RFP with recommended changes. As amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now. So that's where we're on the page after. So, based on the way this is structured, we're, a, we're in, so, <laughs> I know we just approved this, but, what happens if we accept this RFP and then we find out that we can put rock wall in or we can put um, no. vinyl plank in? Uh, can we add an amendment? Can we add an yeah. amendment to whatever uh, we sign? Or do we have to go We approve this. It doesn't mean I'm going to put it out tomorrow. Um, I'm meeting tomorrow with uh, Brad Vegas of FEMA and the FEMA contractor that we hired to represent. And we'll We'll take this RFP there and say, hey, is this the best for us? Or should we take put the brakes on and then revisit in two weeks um, with those suggestions? But I, I think part of the process is working, making sure that your RFP is available and you can get work done because it needs to get done. And the other is to make sure you can do the best job you can and still get reimbursed from FEMA. Yeah, and what I don't want to do is do something that's stupid. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, you know, it doesn't absolutely. make sense, and we're doing it just because that's what FEMA reimbursement is going to be. My understanding is that this RFP is just going to tell us how much fee, the amount of total damage. And now FEMA has a non biased third party who says this is what it costs to put it back to normal. And then from there, then we can do make improvements if you want, but it's on you, it's not on FEMA. Well, another way that we could do that. In, in a more streamlined format. And I know we just approved the, this in concept, but you could add alternates. Um, for example, with the flooring, we could have an alternate for, you know, vinyl plank flooring or, uh, or vinyl, you know, vinyl, commercial grade vinyl. Um, so the issue So is you could still compare yeah. the original 
configuration of carpet. Yeah. With an alternate one of for FEMA, we have to have the put back to the way it was price, and so then right. as long as that's in there, um, I think I think we could do that. I could add a section to say must include price here, alternate price, you know. And but it just needs to be clear that it has to have the replace the normal as part of the bid. Yeah. And I'll dig. Because they they don't like mitigation and they don't like upgrades. That's how they. That's why we had to rewrite the library bid. And a big concern that I have is reimbursement. Um, I mean, the village has said that they'll pay 50% of what's left over after FEMA reimbursement and insurance. Um, you know, whatever the insurance company is going to do. And they did give us car blanche, but I just want to be making sure that we're seeking FEMA reimbursement to the best extent possible. I do hear you though. Doing something just to do something is stupid, but before we cut ties with reimbursement on a portion of it, I feel it would be considered if we asked the village. You know, so I'm, I'm torn yeah. myself. Yeah, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. And I, I think if, we, if, if it's acceptable to FEMA, and you can talk with Ron about it too, um, if it's acceptable in having alternates so that you can definitely tie the bid proposal it, yeah. to existing conditions. Yeah. I mean, you could even say right in there, you know, existing condition, um, you know, replace to existing condition, blah, 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 and then do an alternate. So do we want to have a new motion that allows for Tom to make modifications based on FEMA allowance? I would love to see the flexibility for Tom and Ron to work with FEMA and drafting an appropriate RFP which could come back to us. So you want to see it again? This is for construction, not general? Or are you talking general? No, this would be specifically to the, to the municipal, municipal I mean the municipal building. Building. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it's a template for all future RFP moving forward. So it's actually a really great idea that we so, can use. But before we get there, so is that what you're proposing then? Yeah, I would propose that. I don't know how we should. Can, can we I move, move to strike the, the original approval and then? I think, but hold on one second. One <laughs> clarifying question. Do we have a deadline on getting the municipal building out? No, but we do have a, the, no. So we can, we can talk about it in two weeks. I would move that we strike the approval that we just did and supplant it with authorization for Tom and Ron to work with FEMA to develop an RFP for the municipal building. And is that with the assumption that it will be? I don't think we can replace it with. Can you just strike it? Let's just do a vote to strike it. I don't feel like oh, we're, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll make it really simple. I'll, I'll, I'll move to strike the the prior approval. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. And the prior approval really, was on the municipal building. Yes. RFP. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything opposed? No, I think it's overcomplicated, but. It's very complicated. Are you voting? I said no. You said your vote is a no. My vote is a no. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then new motion? The new motion would be to authorize Tom and Ron to work with FEMA to prepare an RFP consistent with FEMA requirements for the municipal building. Can I make a comment before there's a second? Sure. I don't think a motion's needed for this. Go work. <laughs> With FEMA, we're bring us back an RFP for approval. We're gonna approve it later anyway. Right. At this point, we just need a new RFP. Like we're gonna approve so the right. RFP <laughs> when it comes back to us. Right. And I like the idea add alternates. Okay, generic RFP. So you got that. You got your marching orders. Generic RFP. Where do we land with generic RFP? So this um, went out for advertisement today at noon. Uh, we have till tomorrow at noon to pull it if you would like. But what this is is a kind of. Um, allows us more flexibility moving forward. 
where we're putting out a request for qualified contractors. And so we're going to make, uh, we're going to get, hopefully get some interest back, but also we're going to make phone calls to um, our list of contractors and those who are not barred to just get them on the list and already pre-approved. And by this serves as one of FEMA's procurement avenues. And so once we get a list of, so this is all about reimbursement. Once we get a list of qualified contractors, and we are going to reach out to people to rebuild the skate park, we're going to reach out to people for electric, electrical work, for general contracting, for excavator work, whatever we think we might need, we're going to reach out to them. And if we can get them on this list, then we can get them, they've already, we've satisfied our procurement process, so what their bids will be accepted by FEMA, as opposed to doing little micro RFPs for all future work. Instead of having, you know, for $1,500 of electrical work at the town offices, having to get, do an RFP process, we can just work with the two electrical vendors or one electrical vendor or five electrical vendors that came out. But at least we're just talking to them, and we don't have to publicize to the same extent every time. Uh, one change is to do the same thing we did in the other one, get rid of the date uh, in July and just make it July 2023. Looks good to me aside from that. Are going to be really understanding that this work isn't going to be done for months and months and months? So Hurricane Ian is like almost two years old and they still haven't, there's still work being reimbursed. It's as, if it happened, FEMA acknowledged that it happened. Excuse me. <laughs> That's in, interesting. Real and uncomfortable conversation. I mean, it, it <laughs> depends. Mark. I don't know how to stop it. Mark, I'm going to have to ask you to sit down and calm, <laughs> calm yourself. Can't get it to stop. Turn the sound off. I have the sound all the way turned off. Do I have to? <laughs> in my day job. You know, right. Just <laughs> take his phone away from me. How we're off. We're going to go. Okay. Um. So it, it depends on what you're doing, right? Um, yeah. I think this reimbursement process is the easiest. But it also I'm pretty sure Hurricane Irene was just closed. Yeah. So exactly. So like rebuilding bridges and roads and stuff is a decade process. It's That's right. And so this is um, this process frees up flexibility and makes it easier for us in the future. But we also aren't tied to it. And that if you wanted to put out a little mi a micro RFP, we could as well. So it's but it's just a, right now we're putting out an enormous amount of energy for advertising for contractors and getting zero, one, or two responses. And so if we can get those same zero, one, or two responses now, then we can just move forward with them moving forward. And if at any time you want to change that, we can change that. But it is, we're, we're up against a, a low response rate. And I think everyone in the state is actually the yeah. yeah. And do we have any reason to believe that you're going to get a higher response rate for getting on a pre-qualified bid list? Uh, my assumption is that the same people who've responded are going to respond to this, but then FEMA says okay. You know, that's really what it's about. Is this is this format generally a, a FEMA format that they... Uh, I didn't type a single thing. This is from, from Ron. Okay. And, and so this is one of the things we're going to talk about tomorrow afternoon with FEMA and make sure that it went through, which is why we have that the meeting's at 11. We have a 12 o'clock poll date. So for whatever reason, if it doesn't go through, we're going to pull it. Um, but we'll get the, we're going to get the pre-approval from FEMA that this meets the procurement guidelines. Okay. I think FEMA would have standard RFPs. Just like <coughs> yeah, use this. So my only concern is that it doesn't reference our procurement policy that we have on the books. And as Duncan noted earlier, we will be having annual audits, which is not the same as prior. So in our existing procurement policy, there are purchasing limits and allowances based on purchasing agents. I just want to make sure that this doesn't conflict with those, or if it does, we have sufficient language in our existing procurement procurement policy that allows for disaster related 
That would be in our lab, right? No. No. Our procurement policy does say that emergencies are exempt. Are we still in emergency? Mm, I don't know when it ends. Nobody can give me an answer. Did the now. state end it or? No, they haven't. Actually. Well, we're still in an emergency. Technically, we are right. too. But I don't see anything with the word emergency in it. Uh, it's my point. And All right. what about disaster? Um, so, Beth, are you suggesting that there be a sentence in there indicating that? Vendors comply with the town's. It's it's a requirement that vendors would comply with the town's procurement policy. Um, I think we need to comply with it actually. Cause, like when we talk about major purchases, we very specifically talk about all major purchases between five and ten thousand dollars shall be obtained from at least two qualified vendors. Anything over ten thousand must follow a sealed bid process. Exceeding two hundred and fifty, warning value funded by federal must be a sealed build, sealed bid process. Like I just want to make sure we're following that very specifically. And this is okay, but we should know that there's a limit on what this can do. This may satisfy FEMA, but we also need to satisfy our own auditing that we intend we set up for a reason. So you, yeah, I, so you're saying like if we were to have eleven thousand dollars worth of work done, we need to go to sale bid anyways. It doesn't yeah. matter if we have a pre-qualified. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I get what you. I so would so this can put somebody on a list, and we can award this with at least two bids or other extenuating circumstance for up to ten thousand dollars. Anything over ten thousand dollars, we need to go through a sealed bid process. But these folks will be on our list to reach out to. Got it. That's the way I see it. And we'd also have to publish the sealed bid. But these guys would get a hand deliver kind of a thing. Because I don't think we can. I don't think that just because we had a disaster warrants going against our procurement policy. Yeah, unless there's something specifically in there that says, in yeah. a case of emergency, you can go around this. There is something for that. We looked it up. There is, there is, there is, but I don't think this qualifies as that. This so. doesn't, no, yeah. but for emergencies, there's something. Correct. So is it even worth publishing this, unless it checks the box for FEMA? I, I think mean, it might I think be if for it, the yeah. FEMA. If it helps for FEMA. Yeah, I mean, especially for those smaller, everything under 10,000. Yeah, that I think that's it's worth it just for that, you know. Like we have some electrical work in the town office that's going to be under ten thousand. There's some at the skate park that's going to be under ten thousand. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, I was trying to figure out why. You know, pre-qualification really is not the same as competitive bidding. Absolutely not. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. That, you know, Ron called me the end of last week and said we have a deadline Monday for this. And I was under the understanding it was for to get to a deadline for FEMA. It, it, it probably is, and you know the pre-qualification process is used a lot by the state. Um, they have to gen, they have to prove that they're reliable, that they have a good financial. Position. I mean, there's a bunch of things that the pre-qualification process does yeah. to ensure that you're getting a good, reputable contractor. And I think, but it's not. It's certainly not the same as getting. Multiple this should be something, I, I agree with Beth though, that you shouldn't, it's not doing anyone any favors to not put it out to sealed bid. And so maybe if you're going to use this, it probably should be some clarifying language for work under $10,000. And that's, I don't know if that's worth your time or not. But maybe there's just a statement in this that says uh, the town will follow. The town has a procurement policy 
um, yeah. and any and all bids, you know, need to follow the, the tents. Publish on a Do we adopt a procurement right. policy? Yeah. You can't do a link on News and Citizen, Mark. Yeah. Just say on the town of Johnson website. You can't click on a link in the newspaper. Well, you can have, you can have the QR code. Um, there you go. Yeah. Scan it. Yeah, you can create a you tech savvy kids. So is there, you know, presumably there are a set of standards or an application process for the contractors to submit their qualifications? Yeah. Is that somewhere? This is part of what tomorrow's about. The okay. Yeah, this this was literally a last minute phone call. Because okay. that that becomes important, you know. Like, again, the what is it? What what qualifies? What are you what are you qualifying? You know, know, are you qualifying that? My know? understanding is that this is actually not this. The focus of this is to um, is to shorten the RFP time for work. Is that? FEMA requires an RFP process to, and really the RFP process, what it does is it quantifies the damage done for which FEMA will reimburse that. It's not, a, it's not so much about repairing it, but so much as far as quantifying how much it was, damage was actually done. And if you think about it in those smaller projects, we, I think the procurement policy needs to be followed, right? But what this does do is it does free up a list of a FEMA reimbursable list so that way say you know uh, Casey sent over you know, she is, you know a thing for the electrical work is there's eighteen hundred dollars but that would FEMA in order to get reimbursed for that we have to put it out as an RFP in a competitive bid process and so there's like a small for a small amount of work whereas if we had this we could say okay we have two electrical contractors we met FEMA's responsibility, we can use one of them, they say it's $1,800, and we still get what we get reimbursed. That's my understanding. I, I don't feel I actually have a full understanding from this. You'll firm that up tomorrow. Yes, oh, correct. That's yeah, I mean, the part that I'm thinking about is the pre-qualification process is to identify contractors who meet certain criteria. Yeah. What are those criteria? That's not listed here. And then, presumably, there's going to be a document that says this is what it is. What those are, okay. and if you meet those, we'll approve. And you. this is really just for FEMA's reimbursement. But, you know, like I don't think the town is actually looking for pre-qualified electricians at this time. It's just looking for a, a tool to get through the RFP process easier. Um, that's my understanding of this. Is that, so it's like two separate things, right? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Um, I, I think yeah. I think there's an important link that's missing here. At the Th end. This is this is an ad that says you can submit for pre-qualification. The app, you know, the submitting for the pre-qualification is the important part. That's the part that yes. says I've been in business 25 years. I, you know, my financial situation is X. Absolutely, that's, absolutely. That's the piece that needs to. And so the ad is checking a box for FEMA, but what you're asking for is checking a box for the town. Yeah. To exactly. actually yeah. get somebody yeah. that's pre-qualified. I mean, at the end of the day, yes. the town hired somebody to represent our best interest for FEMA reimbursement. This was written by that person. By that person. Yep. We keep asking Tom a lot of questions, but I really think it falls on Ron. And there is some stuff missing, but I gotta believe that um, if this positions the town better for small stuff, that we're paying Stone Shore Mechanical yep. to do well, the best. So okay, are we ready to keep moving? Can I ask one more? Yes. yes. I'm ready. Very ready. I do agree with your points. I just, yeah. I think it's more a conversation with the <laughs> You want me to pull this? No, I. I think it's no, fine. Okay. We just got to remember it doesn't negate for camera policy. Right. You, I think you should add that statement, though. I'd say be supportive that this does not. The town has a procurement yeah. policy. Yeah. Has a Paul program. Biz will follow the procurement policy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which they won't. You're, you're optimistic that there's going to be more than one bidder? 
all bidders. Okay. There's nothing wrong with optimism, right? I know. There's nothing Sim wrong with optimism. Good job. Our house, he says it we have to have yeah. one Next up is SimQuest. Can we just skate park first, actually? Let's just bump SimQuest down. That was going to be really quick. It was? Oh. Okay. It's just a hundred and eighty dollar request, right? For yeah, hundred and eighty a month. I need authorization to sign on behalf of the town. It's like a docu sign in my name. So moved. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh park RFP. Is that FEMA RFP, the other one that you were talking about? Yes. Right number thirteen. That, that's what we were just. It, it got we got out of order, but yeah. it just made sense oh, kind of to flow from the municipal RFP to the FEMA RFP. Page twenty-two. So we we skipped over the SimQuest uh, yeah. thing at first. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yep. That was my fault. Okay. Skate, Skate park. park. What's the scoop? So. Uh, we met, was it last Thursday? Um, I met with Scott Myers and we put together a floodplain permit. Um, calculated the volume, Scott calculated the volume of concrete to be added for the new skate, new half pipe. And we agreed that it's best to remove that same volume and also to remove any additional fill that was brought in last fall to, me, to make sure the floodplain permit was okay. So under those two conditions. So is that that big broom of fill? On the back side, yep. So that that would go and that any additional fill brought in would also be removed um, to met, equal to what was brought in. Um, in the process of this, we found out two new pieces of information. One is um, that there's electrical damage to the little, at the skate park, and that needs to be from the flood, that that needs to go through the FEMA requirements. Now, does the electrical work required for the new construction or no? No, that's the, okay. that's the change. Well, I think so. Let's yeah. keeping it in very different boxes because yeah. that's what was happening at this meeting, right? Is a lot of crossover about new construction versus closing out FEMA. First, closing out FEMA because get reimbursement is our single largest priority, it feels like right now. We have the debris to remove, which is all the wooden structures. We have to, uh, Casey put together a list for that. And then we have electrical work to repair. Um, the electrical work, we can put out a micro RFP or we can um, use this qualified uh, list of contractors. I'll learn more about that tomorrow. But the debris, we got the okay to remove. Um, there's just processes on how to do that. I think first we need values um, of what they are to replace. Um, by debris okay to remove, you mean by FEMA? Yeah. Um, so I feel like we need to close that out and one of the th ways to do that is we're having um, an inspection scheduled where FEMA goes out and they review the damage, they assign a value, close it out, pay it out. And that's going to cover the electrical and the debris removal. Even though it's not done, even though there's no RFP, it's pretty matter of fact the replacement cost of, a, of what those structures are. And the electrical work, they can look at it and assign values to it and make sure that it's reasonable. It won't, might not be dollar for dollar because it's a small enough amount. It's the administrative costs are probably worth just closing it out, moving on. That's what that's looking like now, uh, especially because we're going to do force costs. Um, by ha probably the town crew will be removing those structures um, with their equipment rather than hiring a contractor to come in to do so. Um, which makes that reimbursement actually maybe a revenue. Um, Where are the materials going? Casella. Um, and there's some, they have to be split. There's some steel on the wooden structures, is that correct? There's like steel rails and steel, the, the bent parts are steel. Um, edgy. Yeah. Correct, and Not that has to be separated. Really. For Casella, and so. So, um, oh, oh, we're, you, I'm sorry, you're talking about the old structures. So, stuff to be removed only. Yes, yes, yes so. there's steel plates and railings. So, that's going to go to Casella. There'll be steel reimbursement that'll come back in a form of revenue. 
the wood will be cost out, the replacement costs will be cost out, and then um, the time that the town truck and the town backo use to do that work will be reimbursed through FEMA too at those at that category Z rate that we've I'm sure you've seen in the past. Um, so there is some benefits to having the town do it now in the fall during its slowest time. Um, so that's FEMA closing it out. The next step is the new um, half pipe going in. There's a rush because of winter coming, whether we do it this fall or whether we wait to the spring. Um, and in the process of that meeting, uh, Nate, sorry, I forgot his last name, from the village came and suggested where the water line was, and it appears to be under the new half pipe. And so. Under some berm. Not, well, I, the, not under the concrete. I don't think we actually know, right? Because nobody dug it up. Nobody. You right, know. that's. Yeah. So we're just. Correct. It's in the realm of the new construction, right? And regardless um, if it ever breaks, we're. That'll have to be dealt with, and so do, does the board want to move that water line away from that structure, build the on top? Water line, like where does the water go? It goes to a Frost Street hydrant um, that the skate park uses, so that it's a town-owned line. It's not a village line, so it's a town-owned line to the hydrant that's near the small building um, at the skate park. And so, do you guys want to uh, move the line now, proceed with new construction? Or and wait till the if the line if the line breaks move it x number of years in the future, um, but the new structure is planned to go on top of it. Casey, do we know if that line was an original line from when it was a mobile home park that was tapped into? As, or? as far as I know, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, meaning we don't actually know. Where, whether it was a town line versus a village line? That's yeah, do you know what, do you, did we install a line? No. Okay, no. So it was going to a mobile home at that time? It, that was the main supply, I guess, to that area. And then it branched out from there. And then when all the mobile homes were closed, it said, you know, those lots all got done then. Jimmy? I'm Sheila. Oh, Sheila, sorry. Look, I'm she you guys look just work. like. Yeah. <laughs> they do look uh, fine. Okay. Okay. I, I believe that they, they had to have, I would say that they put in a new line because the old line ran from Harvey's, before the village put in the water, the old, ro ro the old line, water line ran from up on top of Harvey's Park. In right. that little cement building. Where the spring house was. Yes, where the spring house was and came down over the hill and along the back way right. and through and, and, and down to us. <clears throat> and so when the village put it in, I would say that they must have done a new line. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and if I may, uh, Dig Safe has not been there yet, right? Yeah, that's where I was going. Is the suggestion? Well, that's, that's the most important thing to probably start with that. Yeah, exactly. Because the water line may not be under, even under the berm, let alone the. You know, we, we don't know. Uh, Visual, so. Visually, there's a straight line between the yard hydrant and the, and the little shack where the water's turned off and on. And yeah. So, so to Howard's point, we just don't know. Right. Right. So dig state. Okay, dig yeah, state which is, on the list. I was asking, um, you know, if you're I'm sure you read the TA report is that to have Dean or Jason call Dig Safe and figure that out first. Like, where is the water line? Lay out the new half pipe and just make some better decisions before we put that RFP out. And, um, just, and then also, if we could close out FEMA before we move forward with new construction, um, based on how tight FEMA is with the fear of mitigation and upgrades. Seems like we should close that out so there's no confusion and no hold up with the skate park reimbursement. That's just my opinion, but we're okay to do whatever. Yeah. Casey? Okay. Um, I reoriented uh, really to, to push for fall, possibility of fall construction after our meeting last week because Jason said he'd re it's really better for him to have it come in the fall for the various things he's going to do on it than to be in the spring. 
And um, so, as we see it, uh, all that needs to happen is we, we do need to have Dixit come in to take a look. We don't need electricity for this project at all. So that's not an issue. Um, but it, if, if Dixit said, yeah, well, it's under the burn, which Nate of the water department didn't seem to think that that was a problem. It can't be under the concrete, obviously. Long and short, if if after Big Safe came, we felt that the design needed to be tweaked a little bit, that could certainly happen. It, it's really not a big deal. Understood. The next step is Dig Safe, is what I just keep yeah. hearing. Yep. Yeah. So that, that's really the, the hinge. Um, if, if it all looks good after Dig Safe comes, <clears throat> then the RFP would go out in normal fashion and we would get with. Uh, as we were talking last week, theoretically, you know, a bid, bid or bids could come to you guys just for approval and construction could start after October 16th. And it would go in. I'm confused. If you get an RFP back by our next meeting, that's what you're saying, by August 16th, October 16th, I mean. Is that what you're saying, please? Um, yeah. You, you looked at your schedule. And yeah, that was prior to the <laughs> knowledge of the electrical work. Yeah, and then, well, I just think that there's like, we're confusing issues, and that to me is, so. makes me always like slow down and just put it, putting things to bed and making sure. I think the first thing, Casey, we need to do um, is you and Dean get together, and we need to get those damage assessments done on the wooden structure before we start building new. Um, and we need to get that values right away. Um, and then also figure out how to get that electrical assessment done. And maybe maybe that's making a meeting yeah, with... I'm sorry, water assessment or electrical? Electrical, electrical. Oh, sorry. That, that, that's all about it. Um, but not to FEMA standards. through the And so like oh. that's the critical piece. Is like you kind of went out and you did that on your own, and that was awesome. Like we know about what it is, but... The problem is FEMA won't accept that because it didn't follow their guidelines. And so I think what we need to do is before we move forward is we need to like make sure FEMA, the FEMA part is like done and we're gonna, like I'm working on that tomorrow afternoon. We're working on it every single day. But, um, and once that's done, then that's all FEMA is gonna pay for. But we can say, hey, that paperwork was done and established as of October 10th. And then whatever the date that is. We can push that aside so then all new construction is no longer confused because we have a finalized date, finalized damage assessment, and then new construction is, can no longer be tied in and not confuse the issue. Um, the next piece is dig safe, you know, like a, so that's, a, that's like a separate issue, right? And that really should be a focus is getting those damage assessments. The next piece is the dig safe. It sounds like that's going to move forward right away and then the RFP going out. I think we can probably all still get it done in a week, but we all have to like hammer it, you know, and I think we can. Yeah, and just, this isn't Tom's only priority. Like we have lots of things happening. And I just have to say skate park is not top of the list. Mm -hmm. uh, so like I'm just hearing a lot of work from you. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't really want to talk too much more until we have those damage assessments in. Like. Right now, we have a FEMA inspector who's going to be on site soon. We have, we're meeting with FEMA tomorrow. Like, if the faster those get done, the faster everything else is, but it's kind of hung up on those damage assessments. Right. Can I, um, uh, I'm to that. Uh, I have, uh, I've done drawings of the five pieces we, we, want, to, we want to remove. Um, and uh, and I'm, working up, I'm working up those prices now. So if, that, if, if, if I have to dance to a different drummer than just calling the lumberyard and finding that little one by four, then let me know. This is for the, the skate park yeah. pieces? Awesome. Yeah, so why don't tomorrow we could... Um, we'll, we'll be talking. Yeah, do you have time tomorrow afternoon? Of course. I'm retired. This is great. So let's... <laughs> I'm going to meet at 11 with FEMA and Ron. So why don't we plan <clears throat> at like a 1 o'clock phone call or 1 o'clock in the office and just like nail this down? what the steps are to get those values. Great. And then we're all moving forward together. Great. But it's just, I just think we have to get on the right page and make sure that it's following FEMA's procurement. That's, that's the single most important part is we just have to follow FEMA's rules at this point. 
But did okay. I also hear that we could call Digsig now just to, so we know? Yes. But, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So just to be clear about Digsafe, um, you know, Digsafe is it's a process where they take out a ticket. Um, there isn't going to be somebody from Digsafe who goes out and tries to locate the water line. The village is probably going to go out and locate the water they line. Call the utility. They call the utility. They call the utility out there. That's why I was smiling them. this whole time. Yeah. A little bit. Because um, so the people that were already out there are the people that are going to go out and market. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully this time they'll look at a map first. Uh, Maybe. Nate. It's possible. Um, maybe. Um, but he's got a wand yeah, that, that's what he, used. That that's he what can he use did. to locate a water line. Yes, yeah, um, that's what he did. And he went out there and doused it and found, and he knew where the meter was, and then it's a straight line of sight to where the cross free pump is. Okay. Cool. And well, just the question came up because it is exactly going this way, and the pipe structure, the new structure is going to be going this way and going over it. I mean, I have, I have no issue call, calling Digsafe, um, but just so you know, it's if you call Digsafe and set, it, set up a ticket on Digsafe, Nate's going to be out there with his wand trying to locate the water line, and he's going to mark it. The only difference is he's going to take a can of blue paint and put some paint marks across the perfect the line where the water line. Because we take pictures of little paint can markings. Yeah. So. so, I mean, this is like super roundabout. There's a skate park RFP update as a item. I agree with closing out FEMA. I'm confused why the RFP isn't already posted because the motion last week was to just post it as presented. No, I don't even know if, if why. With contingent on Scott's feedback. And it sounds like there's a solution to Scott's feedback of removing the equal amount material to fill this moving forward. Material we already that was the paid to bring in. Yeah, the concern, so Scott, uh, Scott's decision didn't come until Thursday afternoon. Um, and then there was the new information about the water line. And so does the board want to A, shorten the half pipe with a different RFP, because now it has different specs? Do they want to move the water line, or do they want to build on top? And I think the solution is finding out where the new structure is over the water line is what I'm, what I'm hearing. So. But, yeah, we did mark the, um, I mean, Nate marked the water line and we marked the end of the concrete. Yeah, Jason actually is uh, marking paint and marks. Right. Um, so he's already done that? Yeah. yeah. There really isn't any point in calling Dick said. He's already done it. Oh, don't we have to? Well, before the project starts, you have to, but we don't need to call them in order to make a decision. Uh, on what we want to do, because we already know what's there. Okay. And just for the board's information, this this water line only goes to that spigot. It goes One. to nothing else. It does not interfere with any other line. It is, it is itself its own line, self-contained and closed. So just for your information. Where's the, maybe this doesn't matter, but where's the water? Are, is it's, it is it village charging the town for the water? It's got a it's got a meter on it. It's right across um, just through where the fencing kind of line area is uh, on the other side. So closer to the road or closer to the to hill? The, to, closer to the hill. Yeah. Okay. That end. Kind of heading the, the western end. Heading towards, towards one the hill. one town. So. Come on. It's mine. Um, kind of no. um, my question is, as I've listened to what you're stating, you're talking about the fact that you're going to be taking out the fill that was brought in prior and fill in the amount of the concrete structure that would be going in. And I know everyone's in a hurry to get the state work park ready and done, but what's the timeline on the fill removal if you're going to be putting stuff in? That's where um, Casey would allusion, alluded to earlier is that this is the best time of year for, for Jason to remove that fill. Um, the fill was brought in for the construction of the half pipe for the, the berm, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the part that would be removed after the construction is complete. So you can use the fill that, the berm. Correct. Yeah. And the fill that was prior to that, like the fill that's on the property that's between the last part of the skateboard park and, mm -hmm. and your yes. property? Yeah. 
That was for the berm. That's for the berm. The berm's not over there, though, right? No, it'll be moved. It was just like a staging area, as I understood. Jason said but that, but that, uh, that field that was brought over and is dumped in the field there, that will be moved over and put in the other area. Yes. yes. And then moved out. And then the total volume, and then the unused portion will be moved out, okay. and the total volume will be displayed, will be also removed from that. Okay, so there will yep. be another place to replace the Correct. Place the yep. that, was that, was that was the part that was the, the floodplain permit required, yeah. I'm confused what's needed. Nothing. Okay. We're good. Yeah, you're good? I'm good. Good. So we're good. Good. Awesome. Cool. Uh, are we going to change? Are we going to change the design? Well, I guess. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you want to build on top of the water line? <laughs> I was under the impression that was an if needed. Okay. That's good. Nate said it's, it, Nate said it's okay because of the bird. I just want to know really for sure and make sure that that's okay. Under the bird and not under the concrete. Oh, not under the concrete. I mean, the thing is, if it breaks, we're probably just going to ask to have it shut off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or move, like, it, move it back yeah. to. Why don't we just have it shut yeah. off now and be done with it? Well, it's going to get shut off. Well, so why are we even talking you, about it? Just shut it off. Do you, you use wait, it for anything? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean it's going to be shut off? Oh, well, just for the winter. For the winter. For the winter. It's no, shut no, off no. now. Yeah, I'm just saying. Is like, it? If it breaks. The cost of fixing it probably won't be a fun conversation, is my guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What is it used for, Casey? The what is it used for? Oh, a uh, uh, our yard hydrant. Actually, there's two of them. One's behind the shed. One's right in the middle of things. Um, and it's a water supply. There's drinking for fountain. drinking. Yeah, and also, I do believe the community garden. Yeah, and also the community garden as well. Okay. Got it. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sheila. So, so at your last meeting on the twenty fifth, when I when I watched, uh, there was the question of bringing in more fill. For that reason, we're off that mage now is that correct yep that's what the permit was for yeah so because that fill is already still there in the field there was some discussion that it might be easier to bring in because of its location that it might be easier to bring in new new material from rather than reusing that because and then remove the entire berm on the side that the total volume will be equal what was brought in last year and what will be brought in with the new construction. Okay. okay. Um, updates on the industrial park EDA grant application. So Tom and Duncan went on a state visit. Do you have pictures? Is it kind of like a field trip? Pictures at 11. <laughs> pictures at I won't be here. <laughs> pictures at 11. I hope not. Um, do you want to take over or do you want me to? Back from when the news was still on TV at certain times of the day. Mm -hmm. Now it's anyway, that's when the news yeah, Let's keep going. So, Bye, thanks. I guess the, the update, um, we had, oh, I don't know, it seemed like there was a cast of thousands there, but um, there were people from uh, FEMA. You got yes. all the cards, hopefully. Yeah, so it's like... There's FEMA there? It's FEMA. FEMA is there. But Why? it's like not associated with the disaster, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, it's like a different, more for economic development. It's kind of like, I'll bet you like the United States Department of Agriculture had somebody there. That's exactly what it was. Oh yeah, because the Department of Agriculture oh. would be involved in business. What was, business was it part. a man? What was his name? Oh, they were we'll a man. Can we call him Greg? Um, there were two women. Yeah. Um, but it was. The USDA. The, the bottom line was yeah. that the, 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 the they they the FEMA people were interested in helping us with housing if there was something they could do. To ah. So we basically have a card with contact information, and they've reached out and said, you know, if there's anything we can do. With regard to housing, 
that would be something they'd be happy to. The EDA person was Catherine. I can't remember Catherine's last name. Um, Catherine, I think the takeaway there was I mentioned that given the fact that we may have a number of buyouts of houses in the village, that the original plan called for uh, an option for either small commercial space or residential housing. The, basically the first light on, lot on the right is you going up. Um, and Catherine said that's a really good idea, but EDA doesn't participate in anything to do with housing. We can't. Um, so the, the takeaway really is, Tom asked the question astutely, I think, um, what if the town subdivided that lot and then the process went forward without that lot in the mix? Could, could then EDA pay 100% of the cost of the utilities going on? She basically said, yeah, she thought that would work, but the caveat or possible confusion over that issue is we got a uh, Northern Border Regional Commission grant based on right. that lot being small commercial. Yeah. Um, so on, it kind of takes away some of the benefit of going with this plan if we then have to say, here's one section of it that we're not going to do that. Because then, you know, what are we going to do with that section? Now we just own another plot of land that we can do nothing with. Well, that would be residential. It would be. So if we could, for example, if we could sell that lot to the Lamoille Housing Partnership and they were to develop it as, right. you know, residential lots, um, that, that could work. Uh, I don't remember. It's a couple acres, maybe? Yeah. Two, two and a half, three acres. Yeah. In this market, that should be worth, what, a cool half mil? Something like that, yeah. After we easily. get done improving it. Yeah, after we, get, after we provide Before the water, improving. sewer, and electric well, to it. We just put a, what we're saying a is that it. part of it, we would not improve at all. The the subdivided off part of it. We wouldn't improve. Or at least we wouldn't be, be able, we wouldn't right, use EDA funds right to improve it. We'd be putting up the infrastructure. Right. You know, the, would go so we could leave the taps, you know, for water, sewer, and electric. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the, the the takeaway I think is EDA seemed really interested, and I would be really surprised if they don't fund it. Um, but there is this sort of hanging Chad question about that law and whether whether we could develop that as residential versus commercial. So we may have to have, uh, what, I, what I suggested to Randall this morning was he reach out to Northern Borders Regional and see what it might take for them to modify their grant agreement with us mm -hmm. to allow that housing. Because I asked Tori Helwig, and Tori said, as far as she knew, Northern Borders didn't have any restrictions on housing. It could be, it could be part of the Northern Borders oh. grant. It just couldn't be part of the well, it's EDA different. grant. But the thing with the northern borders is that they awarded for different categories, and our category was around economic development. Right. Like, specifically around the commercial aspect of it. Yeah. Meaning, meaning, like, I'm not saying that, I don't know, it doesn't hurt to ask, I guess. But we shouldn't be disappointed if they say no because of the reason we were awarded. Right. I think modifying it might just be excluding two acres. Instead of having a 17-acre parcel for life, it would be a 15-acre gotcha. with for life. That's a northern So are you supportive of a mixed use? Is that, or are you just asking questions? I, I'm, we, the board really hasn't had the conversation about whether yeah, that a, lot should be or could be considered. It's a heavy question and a lot of hours I guess, for employees, when well, we don't even know if that's what the voters and taxpayers want. Well, it was shown in some of the original plans. Um, some of was shown. Was it shown in the final? I don't know. That, um, I, I think it was. I think, I think yeah, it was the, up the, on the wall. Was it the 2012 Mumley or something like that? There was a, the previous Mumley had. Um, it was Ruggiano or. or yeah, or okay, yeah. yeah, but it had the um, yeah. commercial up front, like you said, and then the rest of them as late industrial. Yeah, it had um, two. It had two, two different, different mock-ups. One yeah. was all commercial, and the other was you know commercial with one mop being um, residential. So my question was, um, did they say anything about whether, like, for mixed commercial and residential, if we were 
commercial on the bottom and residential up top, is that something that EVA is totally against EVA or? EVA will not fund anything related any to housing. housing. I do have to just say for the record, I think that is very silly and, uh, you know, not considering housing as a part of economic development is very short-sighted, but um, they're the ones with all the money. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I get the idea about about housing. I just, my own personal belief is there will be other places and other opportunities for housing and very limited opportunities for commercial industrial development. Within the village. Within the village corridor. Yeah. That is technically outside the village boundaries. No, no. it's actually in well, it's most in the of village. It within most the village. Of it is. Yeah. There's a little slice of it that's not, and we would have to actually. On the Goldfield side? On the Goldfield side? On the west, west end towards yeah, yeah. the Blueberry Farm. The, the yeah. village line actually sort of slices. Right, because Laraway is in the village, so they had to get an extension to go to Laraway. They, we had to do a sewer, a special sewer service area, and and we we may have to do that for the for this project too. Ask the village if they would create a special town sewer service area district. Do they even need to do that? If you want to provide village sewer and water to it, yeah. So it's just sewer and water, you have to do that, not power? It would be just sewer and water. Oh, yeah, because power Because the village is already right. authorized to serve outside the village boundaries. Well, they serve yeah, sewer and water out outside, out. too. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. They serve sewer and water outside the village. But yeah. there must be special sewer within, service Within area. identified town sewer service areas, yes. Oh. Fascinating. So I don't know if that really answers the question, but uh, all good information, I guess. What was the when question? When we hear back, what do you mean it is that what we want Is that what the voters want? You said one of the final thing. model shows. I don't. Seems to be a lot of confusion around the. Well, I don't think the voters approved any particular plan. They they approved. They authorized the purchase of the property for the purposes of developing a light industrial commercial park. Now we're changing it from light industrial commercial to resident, residential mixed. It, 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 Potentially. Potentially. But we don't know if that's what we want to do, what we're asking for. I mean, I think given the amount of time that's passed between that initial purchase and now, it kind of makes sense to go back to the voters with you know, whether it's a either or kind of option or, you know, an open ended question of what do we want to do with it. But you know, I think if we were to come up with a couple of different proposals, one that is full light industrial, one that is mixed, which, you know, the kind of uh, groundwork for that already exists, um, then we can ask the voters, you know, which way should we go with this? Um, but I don't think we really know what the, the will of the voters is, what, given that it's been which plan over a decade. Uh, which plan is Mumley updating? Mumley, I, based on what we told him initially, updated is planning on updating a plan for all commercial light industrial. Yeah. So that that lot that I'm talking about, there's a strip. I think it's 100 feet. The Bradley house would be here. Linda Jones's house would be over here. And the land from there goes up. The lot that was potentially identified for residential use is the first one directly behind the Bradley house. Um, and then everything goes up. And all of the lots on the and upper right part. Where the entrances. Right where yeah, the entrance is. Yeah, closest to Route 15. Yes, yeah, closest to Route 15. And on the right. And on this side, um, there's you know plans for stormwater. Yeah, I looked at it for a little stormwater while. Stormwater discharge and stuff. But this, so this plan, there were two plans drawn up by Ruggiano originally. One was having this be a, you know, like, townhouse kind of 
configuration. The other divided it into, I think, five or five, yeah, five really small bus lot. business lots. Business lots. Yeah, you know, like business commercial, like insurance companies, or you know, something that's, that's that would be a pretty small footprint, but not residential, commercial. So even though this is shown on the map as one lot, it was really kind of further subdivided into, I think, five smaller. You know, I think it was 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. Hmm. Maybe that's why I'm confused. Regardless, I guess it's information. Well, that's good that the EDA sure. was... was Sounding like they were excited about the idea. EDA, I think I got a very favorable impression of how Catherine was looking at it in terms of funding. I don't know what your thought was, but. Yeah, it looked very promising from this preliminary. I mean, the one concern was housing. That as soon as housing touched it, the issue was like, oh, we don't do it. And if it already was pre existing, there was a question about maybe prorating services up to that point, um, but. Um, the other question I have is, did they talk at all about, like, in demand, did they talk at all about potential tenants and the demand for tenants as part of any, as part of the discussions at all? Um, just our own personal opinions that there's nowhere to rent in this, in the Route 15 corridor. I mean, yeah, but. That was our opinion as opposed to theirs. They didn't exactly. share anything like that. I, I mentioned yeah. to Catherine that from my experience, it could easily be a 10 to 15 year build out. And she said that would certainly be consistent with, with what we've seen in other parks. Oh, I see. Tenants as in industrial, not as in not residential. Right, yeah. industrial. Yeah. That. Yeah. She said they've done, and I, because I specifically asked her, is there any time requirement for us to, com do you consider it a complete project when it's fully built out? And she said, no, you know, as long as you do what you say you're going to do with it, putting the road in and the utilities for each stage. in. they for each funded stage. Right. They yeah. consider that a complete project. Right. And the actual build out of the park beyond that point would not be considered, they don't have any caveats on that or any concerns about that. Awesome. So, so you update me on all the money we're putting into this. In the end, we're going to put in water, sewer, and road. And, and fiber. And fiber. And fiber. Okay. We're going to put that in structure, and that's the first stage. Yep. Yes. Okay. And that's going to cost somewhere over a million dollars. Well, we got 50% was $860,000, right? So. And was that full build out? That was full. That was full infrastructure build out. Yeah. That was complete road, complete electric, complete water, complete sewer. I'm assuming that's not a paved road. It would be a paved road. The fiber was the one thing that wasn't part of our initial costs. It wasn't specifically in there, but the yeah. conduit basically is, you know, we wouldn't be installing the fiber anyway. We'd be installing the conduit to place the fiber. We can probably work some of that with Lamoil Fibernet. Yeah. <laughs> we did just give them 50 grand. Maybe they'll donate some. Okay. Cool. cool. That's a good news story. So what was the next steps on the EDA grant? Like, I gave Tori a whole bunch of stuff, and then I gave her more before your visit. Did she say anything about next steps? Did anyone say anything about next steps? The next hurdle that I am aware of is the question of, um, and, and Ron, um, Randall's going to try and do a little investigation in this today. She, he was going to try and contact Catherine directly mm -hmm. about the issue of whether or not the village is a co-applicant on the grant application. Yeah. Um, Randall, Randall knows a fair amount about the project because he actually was on the review committee yeah. and approved for the yeah, Northern Borders Grant. Um, so his question was, what is it about the idea of the village being a co-applicant on this that's important? Um, and I said, I really don't. I don't know for sure what she's 
really interested in or worried about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from my perspective, I, I think it's kind of a little bit of an odd situation. The, the village has a, two ordinances related to water and sewer, whereby the town will be the applicant to the village. So it's to me, it's a little weird to think that the village would be a co-applicant when we would be an applicant to them under their ordinance procedure mm -hmm. to... Right, they'd be applying for themselves if they're Yeah, so, so to me that yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, but Randall was going to try and reach out to Catherine and find out what's your, what's your baseline concern? Why do you think the village should be? You know, and if it's, if it's a basic misunderstanding on her part about you know, that process, we can explain that yeah. better. But. Okay. So we're waiting and seeing. Tori didn't say anything about next steps. Uh, the only thing she said was, I think she's got the applications basically ready. She she offered to um, have a meeting with you and me okay. to talk about the issue of you know the village co-applicancy. Yep. Um, which I'm you know happy to do. So, but. Me too. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then did, did uh, Randall ever? Do you know? Did you talk to him about making an appointment with Tori to meet? Randall happens to be on the call. Oh. About making an appointment with you to about about the EDA. Yeah, about Tori reached else. out to me about meeting and uh, catching up for future for those next steps, but no next steps were discussed. Are you talking about Northern Borders or EDA? This was. I think it's EDA. It EDA. No, it was, it was Northern Borders. Northern Borders. That's what I asked. Yeah. I'm sure it was Northern Borders because yes. it was the application process. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. For some reason, I put them both in the exact same folder. Uh, yeah, it's okay because they're both industrial park. Um, yeah. But so Randall is on, and um, so Randall just did what Tom was saying is that you and him and Tori from LCPC and maybe somebody else, Duncan or me, or just the three of you, uh, <laughs> connecting on Northern Borders <clears throat> and the Northern Borders application, uh, sorry, administration training and process. Um, I attended that the last Thursday with the Randall manager. says okay. Right. Yeah. So we should, hopefully that satisfies the town's training portion on that. Yeah. Cool. Okay, that sounds good. Anything else, EDA? Okay. Um, website renewal. So our website contract is up for renewal in January. At least I have a note saying that it is. <laughs> I think it's true. Um, I think it would be a good time for us to reorganize. And I actually have a request. It's a personal request, which is, I'm wondering if you guys would be okay with me reaching out to the webmaster, I forget what her name is, but reaching out to her directly. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, I, can ha I can look it up. It's on the website, actually. But um, I'm wondering if I can reach out to her because I would like to do a couple of things. One is propose, make a copy of the site if it doesn't cost us extra money and look at reorganization of using what we already have mm -hmm. and asking her to apply some of the themes and templates that I see are available, but I don't dare push the button because I think there's no going back. If you Unless push there's the a copy. <laughs> right. right. I think there's no going back if you <clears throat> push the button. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I think so, just based on what I've been reading about it. So I would like to do that with her if you guys would allow me to. Uh, understanding that the village plays a role in all of this, and so does Rosemary in the office. I'm all then. Yeah. Thank you. It's very Do you need a motion, or is, it, is the consensus of the group good? Consensus yeah. works for me. Good. What about you, Evan? Oh, consensus away. I think I think we pay you like 14 cents an hour. So. Well, we're going to make it 12. <laughs> if you want to start. <laughs> <a few more. laughs> <laughs> and that's just applying different templates for a different feel. Really. It's just different look and feel, and I really think we should reorganize our menus. So we're not talking about like a new one. I'm not talking. I'm talking about using just all of the same data 
all the same, everything that's already there, all the same content with a new theme, number one. And number two, proposing new organizations. So I would go make organizational changes without bringing them here and sharing with the office staff and maybe the village too. Um, but at least looking at that organization gotcha. around. Can I make a special request? No. <laughs> well, I really that. would love like a email capture, so an yes, option when you go on, yes. sign up, and then when I send out, when I just by uploading the packet or the agenda or the minutes, it automatically populates those. What type of technology doesn't I mean, even exist yet. The thing is that Lois will tell you she really wants us to have um, constant contact, which is what you're talking about. It's exactly, a, mail, yeah, yeah. a bulk mail, mail for many, organizational yeah. thing. Yes. That's not what this is going to do. It's just Gotta capture email addresses. We can't afford that. Yeah. There are website plug tools in. that can do that as plug well. In, like put a plug in on, yeah. Into the, anyways. Can we afford it? But I don't know. Uh, I don't know. More to come. Mm -hmm. um, but Adrian is also here because Adrian has a proposal too around look and feel. Yeah, I was. Um, I'd be happy to like donate my time uh, to redesigning a logo for the town uh, to go on the website and wherever else. <laughs> yeah. Logo redesign, which I love the idea of. We had talked about branding um, and doing kind of a rebrand and I think that's something that I'd be very supportive of, um, you know, not only digitally, but we had talked about signage for the rail trail and for other parts of town needing to be updated. Um, so I think it makes a lot of sense to come up with something uh, that is not only usable for the website, but could be used more broadly as well. Yeah. Would yeah. we have to change the logo on the side of the trucks? <laughs> Every single one. We could, we could yeah, but well, we'll get chrome ones this time. We got magnetic ones. So we can just see it. It's magnetic. We would just. No. Are you ready to get rid of the covered bridge? Like costs like that. <laughs> the town clock. We wouldn't have to get rid of co covered covered bridge. Like one of the things we could ask Adrian is, we really like the covered bridge. Can we keep a covered bridge? Yeah. Can you put the covered bridge in the logo? Yeah. Right yeah. Right. Actually, um, I made like a really short survey for you guys to go through and fill out to see like what your point of view is on what it should look like. Um, I can send out to Beth to send you guys. Uh, love that. Yeah, let's do more that. pictures of the town yeah, trucks. Off meeting. I don't want to spend more than forty-eight hours in my life. Uh, I think. I think if we change the town emblem or whatever you want to call it. It's a logo. Logo. We will spend hundreds of hours talking about it over the next <laughs> year. Okay, here's the thing. Our <laughs> logo is terrible to use. And I tell you from somebody who tries to electronically use it all the time, it's horrendous. Like, it's really, really bad. I'm not bad. saying it's the best out there. I'm saying... So can we just say somebody is, like, offering... Yeah, yeah. I'm let's, totally supportive. Let's do design. I, I, I'm going to just... I wish luck. Have no opinion. Yeah, and I think we could go like kind of at a slower process and. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just mean so that everyone feels like they can have their input on it, like starting with sketches and then moving to like a lower yeah. fidelity version. And that's what I feel like. <clears throat> so in other words, she doesn't want to like cause heart failure for anyone who might have heart failure. <laughs> it's all the people that aren't yeah. watching this meeting that are going to have heart failure. <laughs> My pencil. Uh, uh, okay, so Adrian, send me the survey. I'll distribute it and we'll get feedback. You'll fill it out for the five of us. That's right. And then we'll go one out. Oh, yeah. boy. Send it, send it to my email. That way I'll never see it. I'll call, yes. I'll call Mark and get his feedback for it. Hand deliver it. <laughs> Pony Express. <laughs> okay. I think it's a great idea. Thank I'm you very much. Personally, and I really appreciate you. You have a lot more patience than I do. Do we really want to reorganize the website or just blow it away? I Well, I was going to say that what you're talking about is kind of a full rebuild of the website. Um, and I, it's a great idea to make a copy of the existing website just so that there's a fallback. But, you know, 
if we're taking all the existing resources and plugging it into a new theme and reorganizing drop down menus and et cetera, that's that's a full rebuild. It is, but it's iterative. Meaning and it's iterative and hopefully doesn't cost us money to do a full like a full rebuild. I like the idea. It's okay. not about like you don't have to you don't have to account for all your content mm -hmm. and move it on to a new host. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying by any means this will be done overnight. Yeah, so yeah. Like, if it stays in WordPress, I imagine that the employee uploading process won't be different. You don't have to retrain employees and all right. that. Right. True. Seems less costly. It'd be nice to have still use WordPress? every single living person in this town's email. We should put a host on it so we don't have a WordPress logo. I, I think right. that's got to be privacy concerns involved. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, yeah. What did you say? Well, uh, I think we should get as many people's emails that live in this town as possible. Possible. You know, for when we have emergencies, for when we have public events, to be able to say, I agree on that front. Yeah. You know, yeah. And maybe, but we need to maybe say. they'd be a lot like, you know, Mark and never read their emails. They, they might, they might, <laughs> they could have be. But, <laughs> Especially if they see the collecting people's emails is what, <clears throat> 20th century technology. Adrian, will you seek a response to this? See the response? Well, you see, well, you know that Mark responded. Oh, uh, well, if you put your name in, you don't have to put your name in. No, they have to. Okay. Because I have to call them if they don't. Anonymous. <laughs> Anonymous it is. I we're going to. I only want two choices. I'll just, I'll just tell you who they are. I'll just, just tell you who I choices. think they are based on who responded. And you're going to pick the <laughs> one on the right. Okay. Um, Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. For your time. Do you, want to, do you want to set a, a day for to look at for sketches, or yeah, I'll follow up with you. Oh, look, okay. Randall has an email. Excellent. Oh, good. That's so magical. Thanks for getting that done, Tom. Yeah. It was. I've got a phone now too. It's also okay, magical. Okay, cool. Everyone has the has the survey now, so you can fill it out while we talk. I'm sorry, now. I'm trying to turn my phone back on. I don't think we dare let you turn your phone back on. Uh, no volume, no rain, it's still. Ordinance so review from 1997. What is this ordinance review for this. road names? This is 911. Okay, the, the 911 ordinance from 1997 with an amendment in 2019. Your ask, Duncan. Where is the Whole, bun whole bunch of signatures right there. The, the, my thought would be that we should revisit the whole ordinance and not try and do anything. I, I don't think you were recommending it. No, no, specific I, tonight. You were just. I was just told to put it on and then put what we had. Yeah. yeah. So what do you want to be thinking about, Duncan? Do you just want well, to for one thing, I think the the recommendation of that's in there right now may be slightly different than what the interest of the current historical society board is. Um, and it may be it may be that this works fine. Um, it doesn't need any changes, but there may be other things that we should look at in in that ordinance. I gotta tell you that ordinance is pretty minimal. Um, it is just a road naming ordinance. It is. How and, and how a lot of the purpose of that ordinance was to establish a protocol for creating the original nine one one roads. When rural routes went away, there must have been more yes. rural routes yes. went away. Yes, and you know the 911 I process. I do remember that. That's before, yeah. I, that's before I was born. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, I mean the 911 addressing is a lot more than just your mail address. It's yeah. it's how emergency service providers know where you where you are. Uh, so that's that's an important piece, and that's pretty critical to you know. There's a statewide database that's kept on 911 road ad addresses. So that the emergency service providers can actually find you when you have an emergency. Somebody from in India is answering 911 nowadays. Uh, not here. Yeah, not, not actually. Here. Not. That's separate from a conversation about E911 naming ordinance, Mark, but thank you. There's <laughs> been a lot of comments like that. This is your first time responding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is the number one, the layer of media. So, what?
What are you proposing, Duncan, as the next step? I, I would suggest that we, you know, maybe maybe Tom, <laughs> in his spare time, can <laughs> work, spare time. work on, uh, you know, a, 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 a modified. And I'm I'm happy to assess. Absolutely. You know, I would I would process. actually like to hear what you would like added to it. Uh, adding the fact that the historical society needs to sign off on it is not a meaningful enough change to need to change an ordinance. Um, I, I don't understand what the advantage to tying the town is. And the last three or two roads that we've named, they've declined to answer. It's slowed down work for a developer been aggravating on the other end I don't see the advantage unless there's like I see more advantage in like a standard a road building standard before you can name it <laughs> if that's even allowed we have that um, we have a developer road standard so I would rather see that updated than the naming because the naming is I, I don't know what really needs to be added to make it better I'm interested and, and I'm not sure that I can give you an adequate answer without doing. I think my personal opinion is all the ordinances should probably be looked at periodically to see whether or not they should be I agree. They we antiquated and outdated. My favorite yes. thing to do, actually. There's plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. I would agree on that. Well, I, and I think we should, you know, periodically. I don't think we should just assume well, that, you know, policies or you know how we have ordinances right now. stay static. So for periodically looking at ordinances, is this the oldest one? It's got to be one of the one of them. I would love to do. Is it the oldest? I know. Uh, I have well, to look it in that book. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, we're not going to get. We're not going to solve this right now. Agree. We need to have a rotating ordinance policy review. However many years, I have a number of policies or ordinance per year. We should just keep something rotating. One. Yeah. For this, very specifically, I'm looking at this. If you and Tom want to take it away and make proposals on whether or not you, you recommend changes, what those changes would be, if you want to take that on, that would be lovely. And we'll, when you're ready, we'll add it back to an agenda. Uh, the rest of us can look at it too. I'll think about it a little bit, but like honestly, I don't feel like I know enough about it to be very instrumental in suggestions. Uh, do you want to take that on? I'm happy to. Yeah. Um, I, I have to agree with Duncan. The fact that they weren't side by side in one location makes the amendment versus the ordinance cumbersome for residents. It's not an amendment. It's a policy. Oh, I see. There's an ordinance and kind of a verbal policy, right, from 2019. Yes. It's not an amendment to an ordinance. And it's just a draft. This is just a draft proposed amendment. It that was, like. yeah, well, it was, it was adopted and approved oh, yeah, as a policy by the board. The, uh, the minutes, it's actually 12 18, oh. not 12 11. Just didn't copy well. So uh, it was approved at a select board meeting. Should that put a new title on it. The proposed amendment to was approved by the select board. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Okay, you guys will take it away and let us know what you find. And at some point, when, probably after budget season, I would be happy to connect with you. I won't make my comment. I'll be happy to connect with you on a plan for ordinance policy review to keep a rotating schedule. Yeah. But that first, okay, but, my, but the thing that we were just talking about is we need to make sure we have access to all of our ordinance and policies, which we know for the past year is not it true. Be, it would be nice to have. Uh, so that would be the first order at hand before we can decide what to review. And <coughs> day, day one, I asked the poll to see them as just like a starting point to get a feel for the town. And there were two binders that one was town, both town and village. and. They, you could tell that they were out of date. They haven't been added to. The binders are what we have. Yeah. That's what we don't have. Exactly. That's the problem. Because there yes. are things on the network or on the machine, maybe on your machine, just yeah. on the desktop, that don't exist anywhere else. I promise you that's true. 
So like identifying all of those things, that's the first. And consolidating them in a searchable way. Yeah, yeah just getting Well, a, we also have inventory. binders. Um, it would really be that's nice to have a binder that has every adopted policy. That was that was what yeah. our binders were supposed to be. Yeah, yes. but, yeah but there was <laughs> some that were missing. Hmm. Yeah, there, there were some that were missing. Yes, absolutely. So there are some lingering binders. Some of us have them at home. Some of us have them, like, I kept mine on the upstairs. I don't know where it is now. It's somewhere. Get wet. In a pile. Mine's on no, my next stand. Floor, so it didn't get wet. Yeah. Read it every night. Now it's lost. Yeah. But anyway. Forever. OK. Really? Creation of road naming. Those two go hand in hand, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it was like the item to add was checklists for road naming. It's like maybe an appendix for the 911 ordinance as far as like from the builder side is that what I understood? No, that's a different See, Eric, Eric Osgood's on there. You'd have to uh, change your mailing address. But apparently that already exists somewhere else. So we can Didn't even know that exists. I doubt sure anybody follows that one. Though. We need to make sure that one we can find in the ether. Uh, I highly doubt that one's ever the followed. Road building specs. Ordinance. Yeah, or standard specs. Is that an ordinance? No, it's possible. I've never seen that it's one. Possible. Okay. And it's in the book. And I will tell you that that's that one's in our binder. You mean? It's in the binder. Oh. Yeah. Right, Must have missed that one. It's Blaine, Blaine Delisle, and Brad Huber, and <laughs> Brad Reed. Okay, we have two more items to get through. The first is class four roads. I propose we bump this. Why? Okay, what do you want to talk about? Duncan wanted to talk about okay, it. Class four roads. We don't need to talk about it. I just would like to make sure that we don't drop it. Yeah, I class want four to kind of review policy. the CLC. Class four roads. Let's let's look at this as an agenda item for our first November meeting. That sounds great. And that's going to be a policy update. Well, the planning commission presented yeah. Yeah, a, a pr policy proposal, right? They, they did. did. It was my time. Almost yeah, a year ago now. Two years ago. Two years. Two years. Two years. Two and I had, and we were not on the board. It, yeah. it was right after Evan and I started. It wasn't long after we were on the board. It was one of the maintenance of class four. Um, yes. And, um, I agree. So what they do is, hold on, I'll be retired. Okay. I'll be changing classifications. You know. So, so on. we'll all pull up and look through the last four so we're ready for the beginning of November. We and, will? Yep, we will. Check. Will you, will you send a reminder out of that? <laughs> sure. I'll actually schedule an email to send and maybe it will go and maybe it will. On the first meeting in November, can we bump it to December? Sure. Okay. Um, executive session for the six month review of town of Sister, VSA, oh, where was the letter? Oh, it's only 9.30. A. Yeah, you still tap on that pencil. Um, I'll make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss the review of town of Sister via VSA 31383. Second. And there'll be some a potential motion coming out, right? Maybe a motion coming out of executive session. All right. Third. Uh, all those in favor? Fourth. Aye. 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 Fifth. We are in executive Sixth. session at 923.